No, officer. I said on? cunning linguist. But they served me with the restraining order anyway. We are live. <laughs> oh, my God. What's going on, everybody? Welcome to Beastly Thoughts with Beastly Gamer and all the Beastly family. Today we got a full house. It looks like we're ready to go have our own football team. we got Briar Rabbit with us. You guys know who this man is. B Rabbit has been with me since the beginning of this thing. COD made player, the Call of Duty God. We got Connie Kuroi with us. This is her first inaugural <laughs> show. And uh, her channel, tell us a little bit about your channel, Connie, and uh, the kind of content that you produce. Okay, uh, I do quite a bit of Let's Play, some comedy skits, basically anything that I feel like doing, I'll just do it. And um, sub to me if you feel like subbing to me. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I gotta say, uh, I've seen your, your channel, and, and I'm a subscriber, and I love it. It's just so vast, you don't do one thing, like you said, it's kind of abstract. And that's really the draw of your channel. I really enjoy it. We got what's going on? It says Jared here, but I know that's not what you go uh, by. Yeah. <laughs> what's going it's on? Good. Let, let everybody punk. know. I, I know who you are. Get yeah. Let everybody know who uh, what's going on with your channel. There's been a little uh, issues with it as yeah. of late. I know that you made a video uh, just recently about some views getting uh, stricken from your channel. Why don't you tell us about that? What's going on with it? Yeah, I got a, a copyright strike for I don't know what yet. It's this inappropriate content, but uh, I'm trying to look into it and talk to my, my partnership, see if they can help me with it. That's pretty much what's up. I'd like to talk oh. more about that later. Yeah. Okay, def definitely. What's going on? We got 9 to 5 gamers in the house. Say what's happening, 9 to 5. What's up? What's up? <laughs> I pretty side, much just... Baby. I pretty much just do uh, Nintendo and Sony for now. I'm going to get an Xbox uh, sometime, sometime, whenever I feel it's prone to get one. <laughs> Careful. Right. BC will kick you right off the show for saying that. <laughs> <laughs> not quite yet. All right, what's going on? We got Not Too Nerdy in the house. What's happening, Not Too Nerdy? What's up? What's up? I like to consider myself a gamer. You know, I play everything. PlayStation 4, Xbox None. I mean, Xbox One. Sorry, um, <laughs> the Xbox <No>. None, <laughs> uh, the Wii U, and you name it. I play. I love playing games. It doesn't matter to me. So I just love this whole community. And that's what I'm here for. Awesome, awesome. How you guys been doing? This week? There's been some things that have come out in the open in the video game world. What have you guys been hearing about this last seven days? Well, I'm pretty excited because I heard that the Xbox is not only going to get reduced in Europe. Uh, the price, but also it's going to come with a pack-in Titanfall bundle, and I'm hearing that people are actually upset about that, and I do not get it. Yeah, well, I don't either. <laughs> it's actually here, too. You can get the Titanfall bundle here. Yeah, yeah. In uh, yeah. America, we're getting yeah, a Titanfall yeah. bundle. In uh, in the uh, European Union, I'm hearing that it is just getting a discount. And How But, I mean, that's just good for gamers. I don't understand why people are upset about it. Oh. It just seems bizarre to me. Uh as far as being upset, what are the reasons for being upset about this? I bought my Xbox for $500. <laughs> that is. That's all I've been hearing about. Now, now, do you think that's uh, illegitimate concern for people who bought an Xbox three and a half months ago at 500 bucks and didn't get Titanfall? Or people who, who bought it just for Titanfall on release? It may it's feel not. a little bit early for a price cut, but... You, when you buy something the day it releases, when you become an early adopter, this is exactly what you need to expect. I don't know. I don't know if expecting a price drop in three months is what you should expect. <laughs> this is the first time in history anything like this has ever happened. Uh, me personally, if I did, if I was an early adopter and I did get the Xbox One on release and this happened, I would have some things to say about it, you know, because money doesn't grow on trees. And I feel like, hey, look, I was one of the first to support you. You should do that for me, you know. I came out against all the hoopla about the PlayStation 4, and I gave you my 500 bucks. I gave you my faith. I gave you my business. What do I get, you know? Uh, so I, You've I gotten think three it, and a half months of enjoyment on the Xbox One. <laughs> Major, Major Briar Rabbit speaks again. <laughs> you can't get that kind of enjoyment back. <laughs> so you need to put a price tag on that. <laughs> The thing is, though, um, if you look at the the price, though, the, the price drop shouldn't be a ma like a factor for anyone, because if you look at it, it's three ninety nine pounds, I believe, and if you look at it, um, 
Is it, it's pounds or euros, right? Which it's it's pounds. Yeah, no, we have an expert in European yeah, uh, the, currency with us tonight. It's still six hundred. <laughs> it'll be still six hundred sixty-eight dollars for American. So, like, if you look at it, they still need two price drops, or even be around what we'll be paying for Xbox One. That's so, in reality, they're still paying a lot of money for it, you know, and it's even more than the PlayStation Four over there. So yeah. the fact that they said that they get one free game, that's still way more than the PlayStation 4. They get a free game, and they still don't have the features that the Xbox One has here. They don't get any of that live TV yet. They don't have those features yet. So in reality, what's the price cut doing and what's the extra game doing? Because they're not getting anything. Like, the extra features that we like in Xbox One now, they're not, they're not going to have it. They didn't even announce when they're going to have it. So in reality, that price drop is more expensive than the PlayStation, and the PlayStation already gives you free games with it, even though it's not a big AAA title like Titanfall. But is that really worth the purchase? Because what people are forgetting, the Xbox One, what's going to happen after Titanfall? What's the big game after that? Halo. You know what I mean? Like, that's the thing. Like, what's the next big title? And that's what people have to think about, especially in the UK. Is it worth spending the money when they don't know what the titles are going to be for the Xbox One. Okay, I want to ask a question to Connie. Welcome, Connie, again. <laughs> Let me ask you a question over uh, in, in the land of the free where you're from. What is the hoopla going on with the Xbox One? Have you heard anything in the wind? Um, well, I don't think it's selling as well as a PS4. I mean, when you got, like, I've been trying to get a PS4, but I'm contemplating because, you know, I'm not made of money. And, like, every time I Google, like, certain websites, that they always have an Xbox One in stock, but they never have a PS4 in stock. And I think that speaks volumes. Does it? Does the PS1, the one that comes with the Titanfall, does it still come with the camera? Yes. yes connect. Jesus. <laughs> hey, I told you. I told you guys. I liked her. <laughs> like Jesus. Uh, is that is that unappealing to you? I I don't like Xbox, so my opinion's a bit biased. I'm a oh. Sony fag to the end. Wow. <laughs> well, welcome to the Beastly Thoughts. <laughs> That's great. Um, I should just mute myself. But, but you, you also have a, a Wii U as well, correct? Mm-hmm. You yeah. have the, uh, the Legend of Zelda Collector's Edition? Yeah. That's the only thing I've bought on the Wii U. And now they're, like, you know, the dying, and I feel like I should have bought PS4 instead. Because <laughs> <laughs> I have Wind Waker on GameCube. I could just easily play it there. And I just saw the box, and it was pretty, and it comes with a black, and it's got little pretty markings, and I just bought it anyway. Well, if, if anyone in Nintendo is listening to this right now, they know what to do to sell consoles. <laughs> this three, is me. Three more, put three more <laughs> hearts on the box. Yeah. Yeah. Sold. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and there's no problem with that. You know, people are going to buy consoles, and sometimes they end up not being what you want. Briar Rabbit here has a Wii U, and his kids are enjoying it right now. They, they've been playing uh, the Wind Waker HD and... Uh, <laughs> Welcome, Cadme player. And uh, they're playing that new Mario as well, right? They're still playing it, right, Brad Rabbit? Yeah, and they're looking forward to getting Donkey Kong as well. Oh, yeah. A buddy of mine just bought that. He said it's really good. I haven't had a chance to play it. Don't have a Wii U. It's just not enough on it to draw my attention in yet. But uh, what have you guys been playing this week, guys and gals? I've been playing uh, Thief, Donkey Kong, Tomb Raider, Definitive Edition. And I just beat Assassin's Creed Black Flag as well. Let's talk about Thief for a minute, because I'm playing that as well, and I'm having a pretty good time with it. Uh, I actually checked out some reviews after I started playing it, and I was shocked to see how low some of them were. Yeah, I'm having fun with it. I'm having a lot of fun with that game. It shouldn't have got reviewed as low as it did, that's for sure. No. Yeah, I, uh, I, didn't, I didn't see a whole lot of the complaints. So uh, the things that I read are that it's a little bit boring, and it's, uh, it's a little bit buggy. And the little bit buggy, I can definitely see yeah. But it is a stealth-based game, so boring is kind of part of that genre, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> now, believe it or not, I, I saw a lot of the reviews before I ever had a chance to gr pick up the game, and that kind of halted me from getting it on release <laughs> because I was like, I need to at least see what's going on with this game. So do, do you give me the, the Briar Rabbit seal of approval, not 9 to 5 seal of approval for this game? Should I grab it? Well, let I me think, talk about my Let's Play first. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm having a good time with it. I think that 
Uh, it's tense enough, and it's the sneaking mechanics and the rooftop running mechanics are fun enough to keep me playing it. Whether the story is going to be good enough to keep me until the end might be a different story. It's not something like Tomb Raider where you have real character progression. Uh, but I'm having a good time with it. What do you think, 9 to 5? I feel if um, if you don't want to wait for Infamous, Second Son, or Titanfall, and you want someone to play in between, then pick it up. It's it's well worth a playthrough, I feel. I'm on, like, Chapter 5, and I know there's, like, seven chapters, so I'm, I'm fairly done with the game. About, I see, I see myself finishing it within the next week or so. Yeah. Is it just for PC and PS4? Or just PS4? It's on Xbox One. Xbox One. Oh, is it? I thought, for some reason I thought it was PS4 exclusive, because the advert's no, over it, here, it just says PS4. It's on the PS3 as well, and uh, yeah. the 360. Oh, is it? It's all consoles, yeah. yeah. Oh. So That's you can tricky. play that and yeah, try it out. Excuse me. What have you been up to, not too nerdy? What have you been playing this week? I did play Thief, you know, and I had a great footage for a full hour that wasn't even recorded. Because some, some jerk forgot to press record. I don't know who it was. <laughs> not mentioning names. I don't know what kind of dude would do that. That's just ridiculous. <laughs> you know, I'm telling you, I, that was like one of my best performance ever. Just saying. <laughs> Too bad no one will ever see it. Um, and also play Strider. I'm enjoying Strider a lot, though. Like, Strider is definitely paying homage to, like, the the old, like, NES version. Like, it's really it's really good. And it's... It feels like like a Metroid style game because like the map system and stuff like that and like the fact that you could go back to certain locations and go forward and like you have to grab a you know to level up and then it's it's pretty cool the way it is and the enemies are it's pretty cool so that's what I liked about Guacamelee a lot too oh, was that yeah. whole yeah. feel that game was amazing mm -hmm. yeah uh, Strider I played a little bit of Strider I got through like probably the first couple of chapters and I really liked how it had the it had the map style of, like, the Metroid, and that Strider NES was like that, too. It, yeah. You know, that Castlevania Metroid-type style. But it had, like, the graphics and, like, the flair of the Genesis game, which I really loved when I was a kid, too. Uh, so it's a nice melding of the two. Once you get later in the game, is there enough, enough depth there to kind of keep you interested? It keeps you interested because you, you keep, like, getting new abilities that, like, things that you're like, man, I wish I had this, and then later on, like, you end up getting certain abilities that you think, like, a ninja's character would get, you know, and then you end up getting to use those abilities to beat different bosses is what you really need. You know, you, you, you have to use those abilities, and, like, towards the end of it, like, you need to learn all of it. You need to remember all the abilities that you had, the way you used it, and you have to use it at the end. So that's why I like it. it that That's the way it was for retro games. Like, it's all about, like, patterns and memorization and to everything that you learn through each level was sort of teaching you what to do in the final boss, the final level. And that's yeah. what, you know, a lot of games today don't do too much. But uh, the weird thing is, what do you guys think about it that is also made by Double Helix, so they're gone now, so what's going to happen with that? Like, <laughs> that's another game that's, like, which is really done, nicely done by them. And once again, no one knows their future because they're... They did uh, Killer Instinct, they did that, but now Amazon grabbed them, so who knows what they're going to do from now on. Hopefully we'll get uh, some awesome games for Amazon's system. Oh, we, I, I had something, a question for Beastly Gamer about that. I don't know if you guys want to talk about it now or whenever. <laughs> Let's, uh, bring, bring, it, bring it on, brother. <laughs> I, I mean, uh, I saw the thing, the video where you had about that Amazon is trying to buy... Uh, the Xbox for Microsoft. Like, that's, like, the biggest rumor that's going around, and people are talking about it, and, you know, I'm kind of worried because I, I feel like the fact that Sony's doing so well, it, like, it might push the new CEO to be like, you know what, like, let's, while our stock is still high or before it completely drops, let's sell it. And if Amazon ever gets hold of, like, uh, Microsoft, I mean, of X Xbox, I think that we're in huge trouble because... I don't think Sony could compete, to be honest with you, because, like, you're talking about a company that could sell everything on their website, and then on top of it, they could afford to give those digital copies cheap, and if someone wants an actual, real physical copy, they could send it to them cheap, too. Amazon has the power to do that, where you could shop at any time, any hour, and you've got Amazon Prime. There's so many features that they could stream onto the Xbox. Don't forget, they have their features, so they could use that... Uh, switching back and forth from TV. Now you can switch back and forth from Amazon Prime and different things. They have so many things that they could combine that with that is so dangerous for 
the PlayStation. That's why, like, I'm like worried about like that whole thing. If that rumor is true, then that they could really a, kill Sony. They have a long history of price cutting their stuff to get it out the door too. They're not. They're, they're willing to you know take a loss on the hardware so that they can continue to sell the software and make money on the software. They're smart about that. I think that's something Microsoft should have really thought about this time around. Yeah. Well, uh, it, it would be uh, a close on the market, basically. I mean, basically like deregulation. They'd own everything. The only way Sony could survive that issue would be maybe if eBay bought Sony, I mean, or the PlayStation brand. They, there really wouldn't be any other recourse other than to sit back and watch those parts fly. I don't think Sony would be able to withstand it personally, but there's a lot of different uh, aspects of that sale that would have to go really well. It wouldn't just be the, ne- the brand Xbox. All these devs, these developers who work with Xbox wouldn't go right over to Amazon, I wouldn't think. So, uh, you know, whether or not they are able to stay with Xbox brand or Sony made some kind of deal with these developers, maybe some of these awesome games from Xbox would end up going over to Sony and pull those fans over to Sony's side. But it would be fun for everybody, I think. I would probably buy an Xbox quicker if Amazon, <laughs> if they owned it, you know, but, um, because you guys know I love Microsoft. But uh, mm-hmm. if that did happen, I think it would be a lot of trouble, you know, for so many other, you know, major video game development houses. Yeah, it's, it's almost pretty much game over if you look at it because they control everything. Not just that, if they want to, they could also stop selling Sony products on there, the PlayStation, I mean, and, like, then what? <laughs> it's kind of similar to what's going on with cable. Um, the two major cable providers in the United States are Comcast and Time Warner. And now Comcast is buying Time Warner, there is no competition. There's really nothing to be done. They can do whatever they want. It would be real similar if Amazon were to pick up Xbox. They have so many avenues of reaching consumers that nobody would really be able to compete. I mean, they could do uh, Humble Bundles for your console. Imagine that. You know, you go over to Amazon, you get a Humble Bundle for your Xbox One, and you're paying pennies on the dollar, but you're getting all these games. I mean, it would just be ridiculous. Sony would have to probably back out of it at that point. Mm-hmm. Let's I don't know, though. I, I kind of think that the gamers are going to go where the good games are. So, if, you know, if Amazon turns the Xbox One into a, a thing like like iPhone gaming or mobile gaming, where it's just this endless flow of mm-hmm. Flappy Bird and Angry Birds and Plants vs. Zombies, that kind of stuff, you know, gamers don't really want that. And that if that's what Amazon wants to start providing, gamers are going to stick with Sony because they're already happy with the Sony PlayStation 4. You know, and PC gaming, you know, we got Steam, so there, there's always that outlet. So it's not like Amazon could just immediately corner the market. They can create a value for gamers, yeah. but they have to continue to make good games or get good games on that console. They, It's not just about selling the Xbox One for 200 or $300. They have, to, they have to present a value proposition for gamers. You know, come here because we have all these games that you want to play. It doesn't matter if they're selling them for $2 a piece. If they suck, nobody's going to want to play them. See, the problem is, though, I think that uh, every developer, like a lot of developers, want the gaming industry to go to digital. We all know that. Eventually, it's going to be digital. That's what they want. And I think out of all the companies that could do it, it's Amazon. Amazon can make that jump real quick to make everyone want to do digital copies because they have it where you'll directly download. They already have the good servers. They have everything. And if you want the digital copy, like, they'll give you the one of the best prices. They compete with Steam all the time with prices, like, there's different things that they do there that you could just do a digital download. And they're the ones that, that could control that. And that's that's why I don't see too many developers saying no to Amazon because now you're looking at, like, full profit because they know that Amazon will control them. Like, you get full profit because they won't sell it to the stores. Amazon will sell it on there. Everything will go directly to the developers. Yeah. So that's why, like, I don't see developers saying, no, I'm not going to go for Amazon. They're going to go wherever the, the more money is, to be honest with you. Yeah. And, if Sony can't provide for them, they will jump to Amazon. But hey, that's all, you know, that might never happen. I'm sorry to put fear in people's like head and stuff like that, but I don't know. I just, I saw Beastly Gamer say it, I'm like, and it scared me. You know, it scared me. <laughs> don't be afraid. The guy Kratos is watching over us all. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, Connie, what have you been playing these last couple of days? Um... Not very much, really. Uh, I've been redoing Catherine. I'm trying to get all the achievements on that. And uh, I've been playing Bioshock because it was free on the PlayStation Plus. I've never played it before, Infinite. So so no spoilers because I don't know oh, what happened. Okay. okay, we're not going to spoil it, but that's something that I think we should talk about. 
The Why dog dies at the box? end. <laughs> what's the dog, dog's name, Riley? Uh, yeah, uh, PlayStation Plus, guys. I made a video on this too. PlayStation Plus offerings for March, and Xbox One's offerings for March. I'm pretty sure most of you guys saw it. I saw a lot of you guys commenting on the video. What are your thoughts on Xbox One? The way they're doing, continuing to offer very old games versus games that are relatively, you know. Much newer. Bioshock Infinite is only, what, a year and a half old. And County's playing it now. She never had a chance to play it. It's a great value. It was nominated for Game of the Year last year. What are you guys thinking about this kind of stuff, man? I mean, we got Tomb Raider. Of course, this has been in the news quite a bit. Briar Rabbit just completed his Let's Play of Tomb Raider, the Definitive Edition. But for people who haven't played it, it's free on PlayStation Plus starting March 5th. So, Connie, if you haven't played Tomb Raider, I you have to play Raider, that. But yeah. You do? Oh, okay, yeah. good. What other game? Is it just Tomb Raider? No, uh, there's, five, I think, five or six games. Um, God, and, and now I'm completely a blank. But no, there's more games for the PlayStation 3. I'll look out so, for that. Yeah, definitely. March 5th, they're coming out. Mm -hmm. But uh, for, for Xbox uh, 360 uh, fans, you guys get to play Civilization Revolution. Came the out in... Uh, the fairness <laughs> is awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Although old. <laughs> yeah, uh, let me see. Uh, it, it, it's what six years old? All right. So it came out in '08. It's a classic. Yeah, it's, a classic. it's like a it's like a fine wine, right? Okay. It's retro. The older the better. Yeah, yeah. Retro. They're right next to Mario. Thanks, Microsoft. Oh my goodness. I, I don't know why Microsoft hasn't caught on to this. I mean, it definitely garners a lot of goodwill that PlayStation is so willing to give away, like, such new games and such good games. And last last week I was talking about how I was playing Shadow of the Colossus, and I've continued to play Shadow of the Colossus uh, just because it's such a cool game, you know? And the fact that, you know, I could get on my PS Vita and download uh, Street Fighter Cross Tekken, or I can get on my PlayStation 3 and download Borderlands 2 or Tomb Raider. You know, that is that is a significant value. And it, it just makes me, like, say, oh, wow, thanks, Sony. You know, I know that Sony is a huge corporation. It doesn't give a crap about what I think or how I feel. But they do want me to stay in the PlayStation, you know, branding ecosystem. And this is a good way for them to do it. When you think about it, though, like... When you think of the titles that Sony um, releases for games for free, most of them are about forty quid now. If you go to a game, like imagine how much that. Um, what did you say it was called? The one that's on Xbox Three Hundred and Sixty. You could probably go to. Yeah, you could probably go to the local game store and get it for a fiver. Yeah. Whereas something like Bioshock or um, Metro Last Night, I think that's also on there. It'd be about sixty quid. Yeah. Yeah. Like the amount of money I've saved from PlayStation Plus, the amount of games I've got, like for my two-year membership, is just insane. Yeah. And <laughs> the the console itself is cheaper, and they're giving away free games for it. <laughs> See, the way I look at it is this: though, like I'll I'll look at Microsoft side point of view. Right now, Microsoft, like the way I look at it is Microsoft doesn't have to give you the free games like Sony does. Because here's the thing: for the 360 and the Xbox One, Microsoft, like, you can't do anything, can't use apps, can't do anything without the gold. So they already know people have to get the gold once they get the console. So there's no reason to make you keep that purchase. Now, as opposed to PlayStation Plus, there, for even for a PlayStation 4, you get, like, free-to-play games. You could use the apps without getting PlayStation Plus. So now they're trying to influence you to keep that service by giving you the free games. As opposed to Microsoft, they don't have to influence you because they know that you have to get it. It's you're locked in, you have to get it. Otherwise, you can't use any of the features on it. So I think that's the difference of why Microsoft's doing it. I don't think it's right. I think that they should be given at least a game within the last, you know, uh, 10 years. I mean, it'll be nice. Like, I love Civilization, you know? But, like, I loved it when I was... I forgot what age I was. Man, that was years ago. <laughs> I love that, that nice, fresh Beatles soundtrack it has, though. <laughs> <laughs> do you think they're? Do you think Sony feels they have to do that because they have no party chat? Their 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 system isn't as quality, especially on the PS3. <clears throat> you you have none of that. So PlayStation Plus has to give you all this stuff, yeah. give you a reason to buy it. I mean, I don't, I don't think I don't think right. Sony would have to give you as much as they do. 
I think it's a solid oh, yeah, 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 they, they are definitely they give, generous with it. They give you so much shit. It's not like they give you two games like Microsoft or three games. They give you five, six, sometimes mm-hmm. seven games a month. I mean, yeah. it's just a huge, it's a very, very uh, incredible value. And, and none of these games are like over 18 months old. They're usually top sellers or games that have been known to do very well. And I mean, I'm just very pleased with it. I didn't have PlayStation Plus until I got my PS4. I just didn't see the value of it because I didn't have it. It's like you can't miss what you never had. But now it's like I tell my buddies, do you have PlayStation Plus? Or like, no, it's the go back now. Because there's so much stuff and you get to keep it retroactively. It's just a huge value. It's incredible. I mean, poor, well, poor Microsoft. But the good thing is uh, if they continue to do to go about it the way they're going about it now, it will definitely enact change on Microsoft because a lot of Microsoft customers and fans are speaking out on the behalf of the consumer and asking Microsoft, why do I deserve this? Why? I'm doing nothing but supporting you. Why do I deserve to be treated like a vagabond and not given anything worth, you know, worthwhile for my time? You're giving me old games, games that haven't done well, games that are so old nobody wants to play them. But Sony, right across the street, is giving all their their PlayStation Plus owners new games, games that just came out, you know, and more than two on top of that. So if they continue, I think sooner or later Microsoft will hear the cries of the masses and more than likely change. I think it's good for everybody, honestly. I in just the, honestly believe that Microsoft is going to have to wait a little bit longer. In the 360, 360 era, Microsoft gave value in the fact that it was the absolute best multiplayer platform. Uh, mm-hmm. And it cost, you know, it cost, what, $12, $15 a month to play on it, but it was amazing. It had awesome party chat. It was like this great social network. All your friends were on it. If you wanted to play multiplayer games, it was absolutely the platform to play on it. And yeah, you had to pay for it, but in my opinion, it was absolutely worth it because it just worked great all the time. The Xbox One, it doesn't work as good. And now I think that it's a struggle because you're comparing it to the PlayStation Network that has gotten a lot better. Uh, It's feature parity, I think, with the Xbox Live at this point. And they're giving away all this extra stuff. I think Microsoft just got kind of caught behind the eight ball in this in this round of uh, consoles. I just I don't think they were prepared for this kind of competition. Did uh, any of you guys get the the early access to the update for the Xbox One? No, I it's, like I a tried lot of my to, buddies got get codes and stuff at work, and they were all talking about it. They they said pretty much all it did was make the party system how it should work, which is good. That is good. Yeah. I I'm hoping for uh, digital audio through the optical connection, too. Uh, Dolby Digital through the optical connection. Yeah. Did they, oh, are they going to do that? I heard that they that's still not included in this update. From that's not included in this update. That's oh, okay. the, the only thing that's with this update is uh, the, the party chat being set to default, so you don't have to turn it on every time you get into one, and then they're also adding the whole Twitch thing to it as well. Oh, yeah, that Twitch thing is cool, yeah. too, because there's a lot of really cool features in there. You can move the... Uh, like, if you have a picture-in-picture of your face, you can move it around the screen to anywhere you want it. Which I said I that's wanted your, That's your yeah. yeah. That's your complaint from last year. That's also, my complaint. Microsoft anybody involved. on the Xbox One can also see that you're broadcasting. If they're a friend of yours on the Xbox One, oh, yeah, they just watch cool. you right through there and join you from within the Twitch app. So say you're broadcasting Call of Duty on Twitch, and they see that because they're your friend, they can even join right into your game session through that Twitch app, which I think is a pretty cool feature. They're talking about when um, Dying Light comes out for the PS4 in April, I think it comes out. It's uh, going to allow you to interact with the actual game through the Twitch app. So if you're streaming it, the people can go on Twitch and like pretty much uh, set where you're going to get scared from. It's kind of like Outlast. It's like a scary game like that. Fuck that. <laughs> <laughs> I agree. I agree. I will play it. You know, <laughs> Dead, Dead Nation, um, nine to five. Dead Nation is coming out on March fifth. Does the same thing. It allows uh, the viewers on Twitch to watch your gameplay. And if they feel like they want to make things harder for you, at certain points throughout the game, they're going to be able to do that. Or they can make it easier for you. I think that's a, a really nice feature they're adding through Twitch. And I'm really happy to see Microsoft getting that Twitch functionality. It does one up the PlayStation's Twitch, but it's probably just an update or two away. Yeah. Which Ooh, forces yeah. them to update, which I like. That's why I wanted to hear. Yep. It's going to force yeah. Sony to update yep. now. <laughs> yeah, they the, the, compete now. The friend system on the uh, PlayStation 4 needs an update as well. Also, there's no way currently to broadcast chat through HDMI and optical on the PlayStation 4 right now, which is 
kind of a pain in the neck if you're not using Twitch's built-in app to to live stream. Because it's nice to be able to, like, if you're playing with your friends, it's nice to be able to have the chat uh, heard by your Twitch stream as well as mm. through your headphones. Yeah. I think Get Punked, we talked about that, didn't we, at one point? Yeah, I think, yeah. Yeah. So, Get Punked, what have you been playing lately? I've been playing a lot of Call of Duty, trying to get some clips for a montage when I hit 1,000 subscribers. Yeah? Well, I thought yeah. you said 800. Uh, I, I put that, uh, that like, clip up yesterday. I'm trying to get a bunch for when I hit a thousand. Sweet. Nice. So uh, you're that. playing on the PlayStation Four. You just started playing the Onslaught DLC on there. Yeah, I I got it today. Yeah. What do you think of the Onslaught DLC? It's good. There's like there's some of the map like to like fog. I'm not the biggest fan of though. I like Michael Myers, so I think that's kind of yeah. Cool. It's just yeah. So uh, you put up a video this week about uh, getting some views taken off by YouTube. And that's something that, when I saw that, I watched it, and it was something that, you know, it's always been in the back of my mind, like this kind of tenuous relationship that we have with YouTube because we're putting gameplay up on our channel, and it's not, it's kind of like in this, like, nebulous zone of, like, you know, I'm partnered, and my partnership is supposed to protect me somewhat, but at any time, I feel like, you know, any one of my videos can get taken down or... You know, I could get a copyright strike just based on what these companies feel like doing at that uh, at this particular point in time. And you actually had this happen this week. I wanted to ask you about that and kind of hear what happened. Yeah, I had a bunch of Daisy videos up, and uh, they got taken down for inappropriate content. And I'm I was reading the thing while you guys were talking, and it doesn't say what like what the inappropriate stuff was. This is inappropriate content, mm -hmm. and I can't figure out what it is. I messaged my partnership, and they were said they were going to look into it, but they don't know if they can get uh, help me with it or not. So, Which is baloney on that level, too, because the whole yeah. reason of signing up for a partnership and, and doing that profit sharing is to get some kind of support, because YouTube is completely not willing to support us whatsoever. Like, there's no phone number we can call as uh, content creators. Yeah. So, like that to me, that's like really one of the biggest perks about signing a partnership is to get some kind of support, to get some kind of access into the the inner workings. Yeah. Yeah. Partnerships can sometimes go wrong. I, I just had something happen to me. I'm on the same partnership as Briar Rabbit, and uh, I was checking into my AdSense account, and then I realized that for some reason I wasn't getting paid <laughs> since <laughs> what January. No. Well, yeah. You you your partnership gets paid. They disable your AdSense account, and yeah, it goes the money goes your to your partners. Yeah, yeah and they pay the, you. The thing, the thing was, um, my AdSense had froze. I was actually getting paid before, and then when I went to my um, the homepage for my partnership, I wasn't able to log in. And I was like, what the hell is going on? They said, this account is disabled. And I was like, what's going on? <laughs> so I called them last week. Microsoft called. Got, They're like, hey. Get rid of this guy. Yeah. <laughs> Stop being on our console. <laughs> <laughs> and so I, I got in touch with my uh, with my partnership, and uh, I got into the forums because it's really hard to reach them as well. And they told me, oh, we see what happened. It was a big mistake on our part. We're so sorry. Give us 24 hours. Now everything's back back to order. But I asked them, I said, well, I get paid for all those thousands of views that I generated since January, and I have yet to hear a response. <laughs> so they disappeared. <laughs> nope. <laughs> That sucks. <laughs> well, it is what it is, but I mean, most of my, my viewers know that I'm at this point. I'm not in it for money. I do this because it's fun for me. It's something I really enjoy. And you know, maybe in a couple of years, I can actually see that drastic change come from revenue. But right now, I'm, I'm the beast of gamer because I love it, not because I'm rich. You know. Yeah. At first, I just wanted it for that old banner, like you could put it around your all your stuff before the, the one. Yeah. The, yeah. No, that's the only reason I even wanted a partnership. Yeah, I never got I never got one of those fancy banners. Yeah, they're gone now. <laughs> oh, uh, I got a pretty nice one actually. Real nice. Really? Yeah. Well, damn you it. Get I, I, <laughs> Thanks, get oh, okay. No problem. <laughs> hey, 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 get get punk. You gonna have to send me one of those, brother. Okay. Hey, uh, I ain't getting out whatever I can get in this shit. <laughs> hey, Connie, um, how, how long have you been uh, been YouTubing, uh, Connie? Uh, about a year. 
I'd say. Really? Like, properly. I mean, I've been going on and off because I didn't really know what to do, so I do, like, hair shit, but no one would watch that. And then I was like, well, I kind of like playing these video games, and then I saved up a load of money for Aruxia. And then did YouTube stuff. I think the fact of having a Foxhound logo on my ankles really helped, because people were like, oh, she's legit. <laughs> okay, well, it is what it is. Um, what what motivated you to actually do YouTube? Was it just wanting to be in front of the camera? You just a people person, or was it just uh, you know wanting to share your thoughts with with an audience? Uh, kind of all of them, really. I mean, it's cool just to meet new people and like you know, it's really nice when you put a lot of effort into a video and then just even just one person is like, good job, and then you're just like, ah, oh, that's lovely, and you just <laughs> it's just the sort of I don't know. It's hard to explain. It's fun. These European yeah. accents, they can just put me right to sleep. Keep talking. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Oh, no, no. I, I'm saying that because I enjoy him. <laughs> yeah, I was only asking you that because the other guys, everybody pretty much knows their stories, and I don't want you to come out here and not be able to share yours and kind of connect with the audience. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. like Briar Rabbit, Briar Rabbit started because he just found a, a YouTube logo in his back pocket and said, damn it, let's go. You know? <laughs> Sometimes that's what happens. <laughs> cool. So, Codmade, what have you, what's going on over there, man? You look, you look stoned as hell, bro. Uh, I, don't, I don't do drugs. <laughs> but, uh, I think it was actually a couple days ago I hooked up with 9to5Gamers uh, and we tore it up on Battlefield. I uploaded a video, he uploaded a video, and it was a really good time. Um, Starting like a little stupid series, probably no one will like uh, Resogun Fridays because I really enjoy that game. It just reminds me of the old like arcade games you used to play, but you know it's more advanced. You know the graphics are way better. Um, I'm actually just threw out two grand to get a whole bunch of new equipment. I'm getting rid of all these monitors I have here. I'm getting a new mic. I'm getting a camera. Um, I haven't slept in like four days. I stay up every day till about four o'clock in the morning, ma editing videos, making sure videos get uploaded, uh, watching your guys' videos, trying to like them, comment, uh, trying to respond to the people that comment on my videos. Uh, it's just been hectic. I got a new puppy. It fucking whines all night and shit, and it's just really crazy. <laughs> <laughs> fucking shit's all over the place. And <laughs> That puppy was totally unexpected, but hey. <laughs> Look how fat this fucker is. <laughs> oh. That's awesome, man. You put you're putting in a lot of work, and it, it definitely will pay off, man. Keep up the good work. I see that your 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 subscription base has grown a third in like a week, right? Oh That's yeah. That's what I'm talking about. Keep keep up the good work, man. Thank you. Okay, we're jamming now. <laughs> Put it back. Put it back. Okay. <laughs> All right, guys. We got we to gotta see what else has been going on well, in the actually, gaming yeah, world. Yeah, have Brian, you guys heard Brian about that? Yeah, uh, Grand Theft is coming to the new uh, gens. So, um, yeah, this yeah. summer that, that Grand Theft Auto is coming to PS4 and Xbox One. So I'm really glad that. Yeah, I mean, uh, I don't know how they're going to do it. I don't know if they're going to do disc copy or digital copy because I really hate digital because um, something goes wrong with it. Obviously, you can't really get a refund for it. But I would really like to see uh, GTA 5 actually come out. It's been rumored. Uh, I guess PC gamers are actually getting it this month by Amazon uh, customer service representative. And uh, I'm just really glad that game comes out because, you know, I don't have my PS3 no more. I fucking smashed it in the move. And so I can't play it anymore. And I just really hope it comes to next gen. Hold on, you smash your PS3 with the move? Or in a move? <laughs> In a, in a move. You should have smashed the move. Fight. That's a you should have. <laughs> I'm sorry to hear that, man, because no, you haven't uh, had a chance. You have not had a chance to play that new Left 4 Dead. Uh, I mean, Left 4 Dead. The Last of Us uh, DLC, man. That shit is awesome. I feel so sorry for people without PS3s now. I, I have one. I just got. I got rid of the game before the DLC came out, and I want to go buy it just to play it. I was like, no, I, I can't do that. I cannot do that. <laughs> They're going to give it to me on Plus, and then I'll buy it someday and play it. That's true. Yeah. It, eventually, it will be on Plus. Oh, you think put the DLC? A lot of people don't think it's worth the price it is. It's fifteen ninety nine over here. Um, I don't know how much it is, but uh, Beastly Gamer, do you think it's worth how much it is? Yeah. You've completed He's biased. It. He's biased. Don't no, ask I'm him. <laughs> I got I got a Microsoft Windows tattoo on my elbow, but I just can't show it. Look. Um I think, I think 
it's definitely worth the $15. Um, I had a great time with it. It gives so much more depth to the story. I'm not going to spoil anything. I know Briar Rabbit wants to play it. Yeah. But a lot of the things that happened in the original game, it gives you so much foundation. I mean, some of the things that happened, some of the items in the original game are all explained in this one. It's only two hours long, but I loved it, and uh, I played it twice. So I got my 15 bucks out of it. For yeah, sure. It is a tough read. pill to swallow. At two, it's basically, what, $10 an hour to play it? Yeah. That's, uh, that's more than a movie costs. That's a lot of reasons yeah. why people have watched my Let's Play of it, because they didn't want to buy it. Yeah. That's not my point. problem. <laughs> so, yeah, don't buy it. Just watch mine. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Mine don't too. forget to hit that like button. Watch I. <laughs> I just saved uh, you $20. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like Metal Gear Solid. Yeah, yeah the, fa- the Phantom Pain is, uh, I mean, uh, Ground Zeroes is going they, to be, what, two hours long as well? And they that's heard the crazy. price as well. There's a, lot of, there's a lot of side stuff they're claiming. It's, it's $30 now for both digital and the, the yeah. actual retail purchase. I don't know. You might as well buy the hard copy now if it's only $30. Yeah, gonna, so, well, because well actually, the, actually, it's only 20 on the PS3 and the Xbox 360 for the digital. Yeah. Uh, and as well as, I think as well as the physical for the PS3 and the Xbox 360, the PS4 and the Xbox One is twenty nine ninety nine now. I think they dropped the price. Yeah, like they're but they 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 made sure that the download and the re- like the actual copy is the same price, which is weird. So I don't understand why you wouldn't just buy the normal copy because then you have the full copy. Like I mean, some people do like digital, but like I might as well keep the disc in case I want to get to someone else or something, you know, or if I want to keep it. Especially Metal Gear Solid, I'm definitely getting. I'm a little biased on that. I yeah. that's my favorite series. I mean, like, I already told you my text message was. An alert for Metal Gear Solid. So <laughs> obviously, I'm a little biased on this subject. So <laughs> I am as well, actually. <laughs> I gotta say, me too. I love Metal Gear. It's one of the best games for me. You know, that stealth action is the shit. The stories can get a little uh, outrageous sometimes. Crazy. Yeah. But man, I love it, man. Metal Gear has always been a shit for me. I remember when I was a kid and I was just completing uh, Metal Gear Solid 2 and it was a school night and like the cutscenes for the ending I was just completing it. And my mom was like, go to bed. I'm like, no! There's like five hours of this cutscene left. I have to watch all of it. <laughs> and then I'd just be in like deep shit but I'd be like, well, I don't care because now I know what happened to Rose. Do you though? Do you really know what happened? <laughs> <laughs> I, I know bits. <laughs> I know the gist. The thing that I don't get is uh, that Xbox One people are getting Raiden as a playing character, and we're getting that like old school version of Snake. I don't. I'd rather have Raiden to be honest with you. Uh, I mean, I guess it goes by where it came to, because Raiden came to the Xbox, and then uh, you know you have the classic Snake was originally like for PlayStation. Yeah, I mean, PS, you know, originally yeah, it was Nintendo, two, but or PS One. Yeah, so yeah. that's why they're doing it, I guess. But I mean. I, they're saying that now, but we know what's going to happen. Eventually, it's going to be a DLC, DLC later yeah. on, a five-dollar character selection. But for now, that's what's going to happen. But later on, they'll they'll do it. So, <laughs> and think about this nine to five. The ride naked might be gay riding from Metal Gear Solid Two instead of the new ride. <laughs> I, was, I, was thinking, I was thinking that he's not the real gangster <laughs> one from Guns of the Patriot. <laughs> well, running around naked or some shit. At least we get <laughs> ride in number two. Huh? I like Raiden in number two. I'm a fan girl. You could say that. If the guy says that, we're going to get made fun of. <laughs> <laughs> Ryan was okay in number two. I, it, he just didn't compare it to Snake for me. It was, ah, wasn't the same. No, you know, once he became this this cybergenic, you know, cyber ninja, cyber ninja I didn't it was like a different that. story. You didn't like that? No, but I, I the first one I actually played through myself was number two because I was too scared to play number one because you know when it goes, Durr! it like scared the shit out of me. <laughs> it, like, it, like played it really gingerly number two. And then I had already watched my bro- older brothers play the first one so I kind of knew the gist anyway. And then, yeah, so I'm a bit biased with liking Raiden in number two. I don't know why. I don't like him in Revengeance. The story's a bit flat as well. I never played it. The original is the best, though, I think, yeah. like, the original Metal Gear Solid. And, I mean, I used to love, like, when it, like, it got so exciting, then they're like, please insert this, too. I'm like, damn it. So then I had to go insert this, too. And then, like, when you get ready to finish that one, it says, please insert this, three. I'm like, oh, my God. Mm-hmm. That was the first four-disc game for the PlayStation. Oh, look at this guy. He's still got it. That's awesome. Did you guys I, ever play uh, Metal Gear 4? <laughs> I didn't even know that's awesome. <laughs> 
in Metal Gear 4, they, um, Hot Otacon, what do you do? And he's like, Snake, you've got to put in disc 2. And he's like, what are you talking about? And they're like, oh, wait, no, we can't, no, we don't, it's Blu-ray. Isn't PlayStation brilliant? Yeah, when, yeah. When, when you fought uh, Psycho Mantis for the first time, I thought my TV was broken, dude. I'm, like, over there checking my TV and everything. But it also read your save files, too, like the... The memory card. So it will it'll say what's on the memory card. I'm like, what the hell? Like, what's going on? <laughs> now, didn't didn't they only read uh, the the Konami games? Because I, I'm as far as I remember, the game that I had on that memory stick, the only one that he read was Castlevania Symphony of the Night. And Psycho Man said that shit. I almost I almost pooped my pants. I couldn't believe it. <laughs> I said, this dude is tripping. I can't believe this shit. Yeah, I had a great time with that. Yeah, Sony. The, the way they implement that on these these consoles is great, man. And it was a real game changer. I love the original Metal Gear. Yeah, that's, that's my favorite game of all time, actually. To be honest, the, the original Metal Gear Solid. Yeah. Wow. Of all time, that's all a, that's time. A, a serious accolade. Gee. Of all time, number two is a Link to the Past. For Zelda, Link to the Past. That's it. Now, those ah. are there. I'm playing that right now, actually. My Wii U, I bought it because it was like five bucks. I was like, deal. <laughs> Did you guys check out uh, a link to the what was it? A link Future? between worlds. A link yeah. between worlds for the 3DS this year or last year? Yep. I did not hear amazing things about it though. It was good. Yeah, I checked it out. I, I bought it for the kids and ended up stealing it, and it was good. <laughs> that was the only reason why I bought the 3DS. To be honest with you, I got yeah. it just for that game. Yeah, that's me too. <laughs> <laughs> Brave Default is supposed to be really good. It's made by the Final Fantasy VII dude. I heard that. I don't have time to get into like uh, RPGs. Yeah, it at seems this point, it though. seems very deep. Yeah. Like Anytime you want me to like just grind out for leveling, I kind of I get uninterested very quickly. Well, well, some RPGs aren't like that. Uh, some RPGs let you just have a, a kind of a natural progression, as in Shenmue. Yeah. Oh my god, I love that game so much. I think Bravely Default is particularly bad for this though. They, yeah. They really want yeah. You to from cry. what I like, I played the demo on my my boss's uh, 3DS for a little while while we were at work, and I was like, man, this shit is hard. You got to stay in the same area until you can even go anywhere. Also, best boss ever. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He's a big gamer, man. He buys. He has. He owns every single console: Wii U, really? Xbox One, Xbox 360, PS3. He's he's the shit. So, Speaking of... Oh, sorry. Go ahead, Connie. <laughs> well, I was just saying, because of um, Beastly Gamer showed uh, Shenmue, did you hear that um, Sega, as the franchise, they've taken it off Sega because they haven't released any new ones? So someone yeah. could buy the actual concept of Shenmue and just redo it because they haven't brought any new ones out. Really? Mm-hmm. That's it's going to be sick. That up. I'd love it if they did that. Well, I, I mean... Actually, let's play on it. If, if they ever sold that to somebody, it'd have to be a reputable uh, developer, man. I mean, you couldn't give that to just anybody. It'd have to be somebody with, with, a, with a background of dominance as far as creating these uh, RPGs. Because that game, you can't just give that to anybody. It's it's too special. It has it, it, it has a special place in the hearts of too many people, myself included. And if they fucked up for you and that game, I'd smash my TV. <laughs> Period. Who was All the lead? Was that you, Suzuki, that made that? Uh, I'm not even sure. I can't remember. I mean, that that game was something special. It was completely different uh, for the Dreamcast. It was really a, a game changer, I thought, and it, it never really went anywhere. Like that concept of video game didn't really show up any off. other place. It was kind of sad. I guess Grand Theft to Auto took because, some from it. Because if it came out now, everyone would be all over that game because of the style of gaming. Like they did stuff way before anybody else even thought of doing it. Yeah, you talk to a lot of sailors in that game. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, sorry to interrupt but, you guys, but from one of the viewers, they wanted the best laptop for rendering videos under seven hundred dollars. Uh, I don't have any problem. I don't have any problem rendering videos on mine, and I've got uh, an HP Envy, uh, and I don't know all the specs offhand, but it's a great computer. You can get that for less than seven hundred bucks. Well, for rendering, like, it's either two things. You have to look at a CPU or GPU. So that's where you start out with. If you're worried about just rendering, then you always look at the CPU first. And because majority of the software, editing softwares, take it from the CPU. Right, yeah. So anytime, like, a CPU has, like, the, the amount of cores it has, the more cores it has, 
it's quicker. It puts less tension on the editing part. So if you're really focused on rendering, just look at the CPU. And there's certain like software like Sony Vegas. You can actually tell the computer if you want it to focus on your GPU or CPU. So whichever one has more power, you can actually use that more. So the bottom line is just look at the the CPU. The more cores, the better. And that's that'll be your answer. But just remember, if you have a CPU that's really good in a computer, that means it's probably be lacking the other features if it, you're looking at under seven hundred dollars. So, unfortunately, it's the expensive bits that really make rendering go faster. Yeah. You know, it's not like I could add more RAM and it'll double the speed of my render time. <laughs> unfortunately. Yeah. So. Hey, hey, not hey, not too nerdy. What state did you say you lived in? New Jersey. Well, I'm going to need you to come over here and do some stuff on my computer. You know too much shit. (laughs) (laughs) I build computers computers all the time. That's the thing. Like, I actually have a video that I was supposed to do already. Like, I actually just got my parts to build a new computer. And I'm going to show, like, how to build a gaming PC. I'm doing two different PCs to build. I'm doing one that's actually a $500 build. And uh, with the operating system, it's, like, it's $600. So it's technically a $600 build. But then I have another one that's actually gonna be like a three thousand uh, dollar PC build. Yeah. So, well, well, what you can do, not too nerdy, is just send me the three thousand dollars and then still. What you show it? Yeah. <laughs> no, they're not just for me. Like you know. <laughs> but yeah, I love building computers though. Like it's what I do like in my spare time to help people. I like, build computers for them and stuff. So. I mean, of course, I charge them too, but I'm just saying. Like. <laughs> yeah, it's not that donation. <laughs> yeah, I've, I've been YouTubing now for about five months, man. Five, maybe six. It's going, it's getting there, and uh, I'm kind of new to Vegas. That's what I use to do all my rendering. But I didn't know that you could actually tell Vegas where to pull the power from the CPU versus the GPU. So we're going to be talking after this Beastly Thoughts episode. <laughs> well, actually, if you guys stay tuned for quick tip number three coming out in two weeks, <laughs> you'll find out exactly how to do that. <laughs> I can wait. I can wait. <laughs> so, um, Connie, I was seeing uh, one of your videos. It was actually a little bit older about you getting a game, uh, a gamer rig PC. Did you ever grab that? Oh God! Don't even talk to me. It's right here, right? It's. I can look at it. I'm watching it dust away. I was expecting it to be up and running about three weeks ago or some stupid, ridiculous amount of time. Actually, more than a month ago, I figured out the other day because um, I hadn't got the right RAM for it. It's not compatible with my computer. So I've my brother's really nice, and he also has a gaming PC, so he's bought some new RAM, and he's going to give me his. So I'm just waiting for his to come through the post now and looking at mine, t- just wearing away. <laughs> Computers, man. <laughs> <laughs> so, guys, have you guys heard about this issue with the PlayStation 4 controller where the uh, thumb pads kind of start falling apart? Well, mine's yeah, already doing that right now. Hey, man, it's, oh, Rabbit, it's, it's, happening, it's happening to me right now. It's happening to it's me the best as well. Thing ever. What's that? I think Sony did a great job creating thumb pads that fall off just in case you are <laughs> I'm just fucking around, man. Mine's like, <laughs> <laughs> I was playing Call of Duty the other day, and I actually had just gotten these like gamer grip things, or I don't remember what they're called at this point, like gripsies. And uh, oh, what's that? Grippets. Yeah, no gel tabs. Oh yeah, gel tabs. That's what it was. Damn, I'm feeling Yeah. Anyway, and uh, I was playing with them, putting them on, and while I was putting them on, I'm like, wait a minute, there's like a little crack in here. It's like this thing is three months old, three and a half months old, right? It came out in November, like. How many of these are we going to go through over the next six years? Yeah. The yeah, funny thing is, like, some reinforce ones. I feel like everyone that plays first-person shooter only wants having a problem. Yeah, it, that could be. It's only people who play Call of Duty or Battlefield 4. Like, I notice that every single one of my friends, it, it's nothing wrong with it. Like, mine is fine. I don't play Call of Duty or Battlefield 4 that much because Battlefield 4 crashes. But anyway, uh, besides <laughs> that, like, yeah. I am good. Mine's, like, perfect. And that's the reason because I don't play first-person shooters as much anymore. And I think that's, like, the difference between it. Like, I notice, like, my friends, that, they play Call of Duty all the time. All their controllers are the same thing. So, do you have two? Do you have two or do you have one? So controllers, I have two. Both of them are the same yeah, thing. Yeah, see, that's how that's how mine is. Like, and I have, I have like two hundred and twenty some hours on Battlefield, and neither one of my controllers are wore out. Really? But both my my boss and my buddy at work, both their controllers are clapped out as hell. Like the rubber's completely off of them. 
Okay, nine to five. I got a question for you. You see my hand? Yeah. Can you hold a, a full size whopper? Can I? Yeah. What, what, okay. Is this a joke? Are you joking? With me? <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right, now put the hand up to your face, and if you have, if it's bigger than your face, you have cancer. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> right. No. I knew um, it was I'm having the same issues though, and I play I play Call of Duty and Battlefield. I noticed this probably about two weeks ago that that little sliver is there, and you know that you know some people are more hardcore in Call of Duty than others. Uh, Briar Rabbit, you see Briar Rabbit and I, we probably play with the thumb of the North Star, you know, when we play Call of Duty, and uh, it, it's it's really a bad design choice. Uh, uh, you know they went through hours of testing these uh, these analog nubs, and the fact that you can play probably a few hundred hours or a couple hundred and get this little tear, it's just a terrible choice for Sony to make. I hate to say it, but I call it like it is. That's a that's a potential fuck up on Sony's part. Yeah. It is what it yeah. is. I did put those gel too, taps right? on and it seems to have stopped the progression of the cracking. Uh, but I mean that's an extra purchase, right? That's an extra I think I paid eight or nine dollars for those and where are those I, uh, the, I had those extra are the ice I had Xbox controllers that lasted six years. I had PS3 controllers that lasted. I literally had the same PS3 controller for from launch day till now, and uh, there's been no issue with it. So it's surprising. It's like a, kind of a weird thing. The, uh, oh, okay. the gel tabs work good, though? They're not, like, constrictive in any way? No, no, the gel tabs work good on the PlayStation controller. Mm -hmm. On the Xbox uh, One, they, they interfered. And, and they uh, smell uh, fine, not too dirty. What? You said they smell yeah. fine? <laughs> <laughs> no, I was worried no. about that because like you had the little grip things. I'm like, that's probably gonna smell like like a weird rubber smell. I'm like, I don't know if I, I want to <laughs> smell like that. So. Now, uh, if you get sick, Brian Rabbit, can you swallow those? those? Are they ibuprofen or Tylenol? I believe it's Tylenol. You gotta really be careful though because they're pretty big, <laughs> and I, I don't think they pass that well. <laughs> oh man, I want to thank you, Brian Rabbit. Last week you you gave me a little bit of input. You guys know I'm not the geekiest guy in the world. I didn't even know this, that this big, beautiful TV had this game mode on it. I was having major problems playing my Call of Duty, and thanks to Briar, I was for saying, hey, dumbass, put it in game mode and see what happens here. I put it in game mode, and it's been flawless, so thanks a lot for that. That's, That's, what, That's what I've been playing all week. Right now. How to spend, uh, I think it was about $650 on a gaming monitor right now. It's like 24 inches, so my uh, reaction time's a lot quicker. Thing What'd has, you go like, with? Uh, I think it's Oh, uh, Asus. Oh, really? Yeah. Is it IPS. Do you know the what what the display is? Uh, no, I didn't really read the specs on it. And it's 24 inches for uh, that's an expensive monitor. I bet it's good though. Yeah, they said it was like one millisecond reaction time, so that's pretty good. Hmm. If you ever need to overclock it, let me know. I could overclock the, the speed. <laughs> yeah, how much are you going to charge me? You know? <laughs> no, no, I mean, I'll show you how to overclock it, and you could actually You're like Tim the, the Tool rate. Man Taylor over there. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna say, like, because like sometimes the frame rate, when it, the refresh rate and stuff like that, you can actually overclock it for displays. That's the good thing about it. There's ways to overclock the refresh rate, and yeah. you know, so that's pretty good. Hopefully, uh, a lot of the you know the pro gamers use it for uh, the LAN parties and stuff. So it's supposed to be a really high quality monitor. So I'm happy with uh, it. Oh, definitely. That's Asus. It's good. All right. Hey, uh, let me ask you another question, Connie, because you're new. I like I like to ask you questions. You've been playing some Battlefield 4. <laughs> yeah. How are you Trying. liking that game? I, I, I think it's nice. I think it's good to see you know a lady take the reins and, and go get them. <laughs> and and that is the PS3 version, correct? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Been playing Battlefield 4. <laughs> but, um, yeah. I'm I heard it runs better on EGG. Hmm? Sorry. I hear Hold it runs on. better on there. Um. It did, but I think it depends, because when I took it to my mate's house, it just bugged out at hers. Like, I was trying to kill people, and then they kept pissing off, and then vanishing, and then reappearing. But, um, I, I just kind of tried to get into first-person shooters, because, like, I know a lot of YouTubers are quite into it, and I've had a few friends, like, give it a go. But, um, because I've always been intimidated, because the community, well, the Call of Duty community, at least, are kind of douchey. Like thirteen-year-olds telling you to fuck your mom. <laughs> I mean, it's good to relieve to stress. It's good to relieve stress, but like you know, I'm I'm more of a person that's driven by storylines. I'm driven by those little trolls. It just makes me laugh, it makes my day when I'm getting cussed out by a ten-year-old. 
Yeah, from the bottom of the leaderboard. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you fucking yeah. shit. Oh, that's why I'm at the top and you're at the bottom. That's why, I was oh, just that about, that's why I was just talking about why I don't like that you can't record chat on the PS4. Yeah, <laughs> that that's stuff stupid. I used to just throw it in the end of videos, like some kid cussing you out saying you're cheating or whatever. I used to like that. <laughs> but yeah, there, no, there, it definitely can be a little douchey. <laughs> Right, Robert, there is a way that I recorded chat uh, just by using my Elgato with my, with my PC. Just yeah, doing... you can do it, but I can't I can't seem to get chat into my headphones and through HDMI at yeah. the same time. So with the I PS3, yeah. you can do it, but with the PS4, I can't. Oh, okay. Yeah, it wasn't going to my headphones. It was it was coming directly through the HDMI, so... Weren't they have, yeah, supposed but... to have an update coming out for that? I hope so. Weren't they? I thought they were talking about that like a month or two ago. That they were having an update come out for the Xbox One and PS4 for you know the recording and shit. But yeah. I guess I haven't heard anything else about it. The PS4 still doesn't have that HDMI or HTCP fix yeah. out yet. Yeah, yeah, that, that's, yeah, that's the update I was talking about. Yeah. Still gotta use a splitter. Briar Rabbit, the question I have for you though is, uh, yours is just connected through the HDMI and then it goes through your splitter, right? Because yeah, it goes through my splitter, and, and then it goes to my... It goes... I'm sorry, it goes PS4, splitter, Elgato. Yeah, that's why it can uh, pick up the, the noise for the in-game chat, but, like, if you do it the other way with the HDMI converter, uh, the, the picture goes through HDMI, and it converts to DVI, and then also it goes digital out into the HD converter, and actually digital out will actually pick up the sound of the... And it mixes it into the HDMI so yeah. that Elgato can pick it up? Yep. Not but like sold. No, like, no, oh, yeah, <laughs> I think it's a waste now because this whole setup costs like about like it costs like fifty, like fifty-two dollars. And I like they said any day now, Sony could be like, oh, just kidding, HDCP is like gone, yep, and then you just waste you it. Just money. Yep. I think we found our MacGyver in here. Like. Hell yeah, he must live next door to Bob the Builder or something. <laughs> Fuck calling PlayStation. I'm gonna call him for tech support. <laughs> oh yeah, he's on it. <laughs> that's how I fix the the blink and blue light for people. That's what my one video that I have like has like about like like seventy thousand views because I I showed how to get past the blink and blue light and yeah. like I fixed like a lot of people like I was just there like and, you know I'm not getting paid by anyone but I was there I was there Skype calling people and like fixing it when it just came out the first month. You yeah. should see how many I like had to help how many people I had to help. Damn. There's like a good couple thousand that like. They got it fixed, and there's a bunch that did not get it fixed, and they I have, have to send it back. For you guys, like um, most of you guys are PS4 users. Do you guys have like any problems with your PS4s at all, like from lagging to overheating? My eject anything? button doesn't work 90% of the time. Yeah. Really? Oh. Really? Yeah, I like I press my eject button, it doesn't work, so I just have to like go to the game and hit options, and then eject it like uh, manually through there. I get a lot of error codes, like just random. Oh, that's, that's my that's mistakes on the stuff. Yeah, that's software. That'll be a software patch or something. That's yeah. That that'll probably fix the next patch. That's not like the the hardware itself, but yeah. Oh, okay. Well, well, my PS4. Whenever I use it, a message pops up that says, "Beastly gamer, welcome, and we love you." No, I'm just kidding. I got two 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 statements. Uh, one is for COD made player. I like those glasses. You look like you can do my my taxes. And another <laughs> question. I got one statement. Uh, for not too nerdy, okay? Uh, did you go to school, to a technical school to learn uh, what you what you know about the intricacies of this tech? Well, I like graduated for uh, I have computer science and software engineering. I have like two masters right now, so I have like so master's. He's a certified right nerd, then. We're just like we're just like <laughs> underscore nerds. He's a certified. Wait, sorry, 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 sorry. Because... One, <laughs> hey, I'm sorry. Sure. I said that wrong. A bachelor's of computer science and one master's for the software engineering. I didn't get the master's for computer science. Sorry. I mean, the, <laughs> I just the way you've learned it. The way he's blurting it out, it sounds like his master's Darth Vader or something. He knows all this shit. Um, <laughs> now, I didn't go to, to any technical school for this, but if I if I take a picture or a video of a school, do you think I can get 70,000 views? <laughs> Dude, I mean, that, that was just luck, I think, because it just turned out that so many people had that problem, and I just – I had the problem, too, on my PlayStation, and ever since I fixed it, it has not been blink and blue since. So I did that, but unfortunately, my first Xbox One had a, a bad disk drive, and I had to send it back. How and long did I, it take to get it back? I got it back in, I think it took like a week, a week oh, and a half it's to not get bad. it back. That's not too bad. So, and I didn't have to pay extra. I, I told them no, like because they said they they wanted like to hold 
the money for a new system. In order to get it back, you had to um, pay for pay, it twice, basically. Pay for it again, and like they're gonna hold it. They're like, oh, we'll give you the money back. I'm like, no. <laughs> I'm like, I bought this already. Why am I gonna give you even more money just for you to ship me a new one? Because it came broken. Like, and I understand. Like, I wasn't upset because first of all, I had a PlayStation Four. I can still play with while that's gone. And second of all, like, I understand that's what happens when you buy a console right away. So I, I don't get upset with that stuff. If I see there's any hardware damage, I send it back. If it's software, I'll try to fix it. And I knew that blinking blue light was a message. That's an error message. Same thing that happens for a computer. That's not. That means it's software. That's not hardware. Majority of times, there might be something broken that's causing it. But majority of times, it's a software error. So there's ways to fix that. So I just feel like I'm really retarded. I'm at school right now, just like zoning the fuck out. <laughs> I feel like I'm the guy in class. Like, stop raising your damn hand. <laughs> I know that guy. I hate that guy. <laughs> You're never gonna get it, man. Take your hand down. <laughs> this, this is fucking we awesome. We just wanna get out of here. <laughs> No, man, I, this is great. I like, I like learning new things, and I had no idea that you were this technologically savvy. You know, do you have a laser pen in your, your lapel? I kind of do, I'm not going to lie. I'm like, I'm not, I'm not too nerdy. <laughs> I'm not too nerdy. <laughs> I had a question for you guys, though. Um, for the light bar on the PlayStation 4, I actually, I actually just purchased something on eBay that actually uh, you can get custom made. It's like a little <laughs> sticker thing. Yeah. And, uh, Actually, it's going to say not too nerdy on it. It's a little sticker thing you could do, so you can actually customize your own light bar, so it's not just there, and you could do stuff with it. I thought it was pretty cool, so it only cost like $4. Did you see that on IGN? Yeah, yeah so that's I where I saw that. I'm like, I I'm like <laughs> click, click, buy. <laughs> so it's only 4 bucks. I could buy like one and a half of those. <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and grab it. <laughs> it's, it looks pretty cool. Let's see what it looks like though when I get it though. So, so it's a, it's a clear decal. Quality. It no, it's actually solid on the side, so it blocks out the light. So they actually sell the solid black too for the people that don't like the light bar. They yeah. sell a solid black. But other than that, it, it uh, you could do whatever design you want. You could do a logo. You could do like an actual uh, name or whatever, and you could do it. And it, it blocks out like the whole thing. So. Cool. So it just glows in the dark, your name or whatever. So it's pretty, it's pretty cool. I mean, I might as well do use it for something because the games they use it so far, is, it's not that great. I don't know the purpose of it yet, but we'll see in the future, I guess. I'll wait till uh, we see if Scuff Gaming changes the shape of that thing for their controller. Mm. Yeah, we'll more, see. More than likely, they, they just need to make some nice analogs, and it's perfectly fine. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, Briar Rabbit, what are you going to be doing nine days from now, buddy? What's nine days? Oh! <laughs> I'm going to be getting ready for my birthday, and I may think about your birthday. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> well, 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 my birthday is ten days from now, but uh, my oh. birthday, I think I think you'll be knee-deep in some uh, Titanfall. Correct? Titanfall, that's right. Oh, man, I can't wait for that game to come out. I'm still the bait on getting it on PC. What? Yeah. <laughs> I'm Don't say it. The beta? Hardcore. I I was in the beta. I got to rank twelve, and then I turned the game off. I didn't really. Do I, I well, enjoyed it. Were you bored? The AI is just so dumb, and they have the same spawn system as Call of Duty, which that's the reason why I don't really necessarily get into Call of Duty you? so much. Yep. Yep. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I had a great time in the beta, and what I'm really hoping from Titanfall, I've said this before, so I'll be brief, is that that, that AI allows people who aren't, who aren't Call of Duty nerds, like who, who don't play Call of Duty every day uh, for years on end, can get into Titanfall and have a good time because they'll still have success. Uh, they might not be at the top of the leaderboard at the end, but they'll feel like they killed a lot of people and they had a good time. Yeah, yeah I agree uh, with you on that. It's uh, getting the casual-based gamer more into a shooter, which is good. Yeah. The hardcore sh shooter fan may have more of an issue with it. We'll have to see. Well, that would be you, Briar Rabbit. So you, th you think you might have an I issue? I had a good with time it. in the beta. Uh, you know, I did get a little bored toward the end, but there was only two maps and like yeah. two weapons to use. There so. wasn't nothing now, to now, use. When, when you play a, a competitive first-person shooter, Briar, Briar Rabbit, you go a year. Uh, I'd like to see you try to pull it off for a year, but I'm hearing rumblings that it might not last that long. Well, we'll I'm see. Go I'm going to be getting it on the PC. Yeah, um, PC here that, too. That's for sure. I want to get it because you know it's it's simple. 
I don't have to buy an Xbox One now. Uh, <laughs> uh, and um, and I'll probably be doing you know my little review on that. Is anybody else grabbing it for PC besides? I think I, 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 might, I, might, I might. I might. I don't know. You might. What, what about you? What about you, Connie? Have you heard anything about uh, about Titanfall? What are your thoughts on it? Um, it's not really my sort of game, and I haven't had a chance to play it because I don't own an Xbox One, or uh, technically I don't even own a PC. So I can't really say much about it. You do, but it's dusty. Yeah. The waiting game. I've never had a PC that wasn't dusty. <laughs> so speaking of reviews. Beasley, you just said that once you uh, get your hands on it, you'll be sure to put a, up a review. Uh, we've talked about this briefly before, and uh, playing Thief and reading the reviews for Thief kind of put it in my mind again. But the more the more the games press seems to get closer and closer to the industry, it seems like they cannot honestly review a game anymore. Uh I was thinking about this a lot when Battlefield came out and it had these huge high scores and then we got the game and it was completely freaking broken. And I'm like, who reviewed this game? How could you give it a 9 out of 10? You know, like, the game is completely broken. But now I'm playing Thief and I'm having a great time with it and it's getting miserable scores. Uh, if you look at Metacritic, there's tons of people giving it, like, 4s, 5s uh, out of 10. And I'm wondering to myself, like... Is is there any real game journalism? Is there anybody out there who's really reviewing games, or or is, has the game press gotten so close to the developers that they're just regurgitating uh, press releases at this point, and they're just not to be trusted? What do you guys all think about that? There was I think that. Ooh. Go 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 go! You're new. Go. <laughs> okay, I mean, uh, there was that whole thing about like EA uh, paying off people. To leave good reviews, so it could be that you know the people of Thief are just you know not paying people to put good reviews in, or just can't afford oh. to put people. <laughs> so they just don't have the money to get the good reviews. Mhm. Mm I think it's based on your perception of the game and what you think, like because everyone's gonna look at any game you play differently. Like I think, for instance, I think Nino Kuni was better than Final Fantasy VII, but a lot of people don't think that. You know, it's die all based now. on your perception. Uh -huh. You die. Did now. you did you play Nino Kuni? Yeah, I have it. That game is amazing, man. That game it, it, destroys it is. Final Fantasy VII. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it sure does. No, I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> honestly, uh, to each his own, I guess. You know, Final yeah, Fantasy is a great just... RPG. It's an old RPG, so a lot of the mechanics that come out now have built up on this system. So it's like comparing Pong to, you know, Virtual Tennis or something. It's it's a different time, it's a different engine, and a lot of the things that have been, you know, implemented into a newer game was built on the foundation of the older one. I still have deep nostalgia for Final Fantasy VII. It's one of my favorite games of all time. I think Studio Ghibli, I think Nino Kuni is one of the, the better RPGs that have come out in a very long time. But personally, I just can't go that far and say yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. I'll respect uh, your opinion on that. <laughs> all right, brother. Yeah. Briar <laughs> so Rabbit. Uh, the point that you made before... Um, I think you're right about that, but there's also there's more to it, I think. Like, when they review a game, you know, people get it for a month in advance. They get three weeks, a month of events. They have plenty of time to play that game. My point is, what game are they reviewing? Because how many games do you get that have patches to it before? Yeah. You know, they how many them? games are updated? So when they give a review score, are they really reviewing the same game you're playing? The answer is no. Because no. when you when a development team has a, a chance to uh, make a game, they have deadlines. They have times that they have to release certain patches and certain things. Their last patches come in the final month within the game. And that's why some games, they announce that they're gold. When they say they're gold, they're ready to go. They're ready to to, to purchase. Mm -hmm. And the reviewers don't get that when it's gold. They usually get it before it's gold. So right. my point is, like, how can they give a, a true review of a game for someone that's purchasing a game when they don't have the actual retail game like everyone else does? That's the thing I don't understand. So when you get a low score and it has to do with mechanics or something's a little glitchy, well, when do you think they're going to fix that? That's the point of the patches. That's what they do. They try to patch it up last minute because they have a certain deadline to, like, to fulfill. I think that's the problem with the whole like review industry that they do it too soon, in my opinion. Yeah, but you know I can see it from the press's point of perspective as well because they have to get that review up or they want to get that review up day one so that somebody going to the store thinking I'm going to get that brand new game that comes out today. But first, you know what? I'll check out this website to see if it's going to be any good or not. Mm -hmm. 
But I don't think that review really means much anymore. I mean, sometimes, like Knack, for instance, that game ended up being pretty polarizing. A lot of people really ended up enjoying that game once they got it home. But if you looked at the gaming press, it got critically killed. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was... Everybody said it was bad. And then later, you know, you're, you're talking to people who said, you know, I like that game. It was kind of fun. The graphics were good. It was quirky. Uh, sure, it might not have been the deepest game ever, but for a launch day game, it wasn't that bad. And I think there's just there's more and more there's this gap between people who play games and, like, kind of consumers and this gaming press that has got this release cycle. They've, they've got their own release cycle, like, they don't get that game that day one patch, right? They review the game before that patch comes out. And they definitely don't get that month two patch that Battlefield needed or month five patch that it's Battlefield still getting, needs. It's still getting patched. <laughs> yeah, so it's, I, I don't know. Like, at this point, I'm almost over reviews. Like, if, if I look at the Thief review, I'm like, first of all, the scores are all over the place. You, you get anywhere from a 4 out of 10 to a 9 out of 10. So who am I to believe there? And sure, I could look for like authors that have said stuff that I like in the past, but like you said, they're reviewing a game that I'm never going to play. It's a game that you know was released to reviewers a month ago, but is never going to get released to the public. I think well, I feel the same about Castlevania. I was going to pick up Castlevania, but the reviews are getting so panned on that game as well. I wanted to play it. <laughs> My brother loves that game. The new he one? just bought Castlevania too. Yeah. He, he tried to get the coffin, but it didn't come out or something. <laughs> so he just got the normal one. But yeah, he really recommends that. It's his favorite game at the moment. There you go. Cool. <laughs> well, I think one thing that you probably should, like, just watch, like, the trailers sometimes, or even just a bit of gameplay. I know, like, something like Left 4 Dead, that's a bad example of, like, a good trailer and a bad game. But, like, that way you make your own assumption on it, and then if you don't like it, you're like, oh, well, that's my fault, really. And watching a few gameplays of it is different to watching or reading someone's Opinion? That's true. Yeah. That, that's true. But they lie to you in the trailers too, with Alien Colonial Marine yeah, last year. Oh my <laughs> god! Don't even bring up that game. Game. <laughs> Oh my god! Oh, they tricked me so bad. They're doing, they're doing it seven. again now. <laughs> they yeah. tricked me so bad. <laughs> they, they turned. Uh, what is it? Um, and what is the game? Insomnia? No. What's the PC game that's kind of like Slender? Is it Insomnia or something? Den for Pigs? I'm trying to remember the name of it. They're taking this PC-centric... Amnesia. Amnesia. Amnesia, yeah, that's it. I knew it was one of them. Uh, insomnia. Amnesia. But they're doing... <laughs> they're doing... Um, they're doing something really sim- similar to the Amnesia style with a new Alien game where you don't have any weapons or, or any type of, you know, uh, offense. And it's kind of like a scary Amnesia-type game. So we'll see what Sega's doing with there. But the way I feel about reviews is... These companies that do reviews heavily, they do get early versions of games, and they might they may take that into consideration during that review that these these uh, issues might be patched before the uh, final release, and then give it a good review on good faith that these uh, developers are going to patch it before release. If that's the case, I think it's really bad for business. But I'm seeing a lot of this shit uh, coming out in the press where games are getting bad reviews or good reviews and, and turning out to be completely the opposite once it hits the mainstream and that's why when I when I get a review or I see a review I like to wait at least until someone who's not IGN or GameSpot does a review. I'll wait for Briar Rabbit to do a review. I'll wait for one of you guys to review a game so I can get the everyman's opinion on it and then I'll get a better uh, field of reference before I give the game a shot. Sure. Look at the, some of the most popular games that have kind of hit YouTube in the last few years like DayZ. How are you going to review that game? You know, League of Legends. How are you going to review that game? When that game, it came out, it got out of beta, what, like a year after it had like a million people playing it? Yeah. yeah. You know, how do you review this stuff at this point? It's it's such a different world than when we used to open up EGM and uh, read reviews for Street Fighter Turbo. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> you know? or, or check fatalities in Mortal Kombat 2. Yeah, reading some cheat codes out of the back of the magazine. Yeah. Hell yeah. Oh, I'm old. <laughs> Times have changed, guys. Memories. <laughs> yeah. Oh uh, god. We're we're a bunch of old guys, and we got a bunch of young people here with us. One day, you guys will be as old as us. So just enjoy the moments. I look you young. Know? I'm pretty old too, though. I'm not. You know, I'm pretty old. 
Go do some cartwheels while you can, guys. <laughs> <Get your jeans. laughs> what do you guys think about of uh, um, Santa Monica Studios or whatever laying off a bunch of people? Oh. oh yeah. What do you think about that, Beastly? Huh? Well, I made. A... <laughs> I made a. Vi- I made. I made. I made a uh, video on it, and um, who knows, man? More than likely, they're going to start focus on, focusing on more uh, narrative-driven video games. They, they laid off. That, the do you think that has a uh, uh, story behind it with uh, order being delayed, and then they're going to push whatever project they had way back? So instead of claiming that they have a new IP, they're just pushing it back even further. It could, but that would be major, you know. Because I don't see the order coming out when they're claiming it's supposed to come out. Well, the the way it's looking now, I couldn't imagine it coming out in 2014. It's so buggy and, and jumpy, and that's mm-hmm. across the board. You mm-hmm. know, they've released gameplay footage of it. Graphically, the game is stunning, but it's just it's running very. That's why I'm, wor- I'm very worried about Second Son because of that too. Because yes, Second Son looks good. But this, you see the same five minutes of gameplay everything you watch. They don't show you anything else. I'm very worried about that game. Well, I love I've, Infamous. I've actually seen footage of uh, Infamous beyond the, the trailers that have been released, and it was actually gameplay footage, and uh, it looked phenomenal. It didn't move buggy at all. It was it's smooth frame rate. Hopefully, you know, I mean, what else can Sony do at this point? they got to do something to uh, best the competition in March. They've already got a, a Titan coming out. Yeah. On March yeah. 11th, so they're going to have to do something. And that's really the only thing they have to fall back on, you know. And they, if it, would, it would either be this game, or if they were developing like God of War or something, something huge from Sony to you know come up against the competition, Titanfall. And uh, more than likely, hopefully, it's 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 a really good game. I'm looking forward to it. Have you guys heard anything about Watch Dogs? Because I just think it's funny that was like one of the main launch titles. You know, it, they had it imprinted on the box, just like mm-hmm. Infamous Second Son. We didn't have a launch title. Xbox One, they had, you know, Dead Rising 3. You know, I haven't heard anything about Watch Dogs since, you know, they talked about it being a uh, launch title or, you know, uh, an exclusive. We had, and we I had Killzone, heard but let's not talk about that game. Yeah, well, Killzone, yeah, let's talk about that game. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> I've only seen one gameplay trailer for it, and I haven't heard any other news about it. I haven't heard any release dates. Actually, the last I heard it was being pushed back, and that's all they said about it. And well, that really confuses that, me again. because they've been sponsoring it on the boxes, you know, oh, look at this badass game we're giving you, and they haven't mentioned anything about it. So I don't know if they're having major issues with it or if they heard that GTA is coming to next gen and they don't want an open sandbox versus another open sandbox. You know what well, I'm saying? Well, I don't, I don't think that would be a major issue at this point because Grand Theft Auto has already made the major crater that it's going to make. Uh, it won't yeah, but the same so way if you got there. people that might not still have their uh, PS3 or their Xbox 360 and they might want to play it, or there's still people out there that got the new console and don't have the old one and they want to play GTA 5, so I think their sales will go up again. But you're going to buy GTA 5 over Watch Dogs, a game you've never played before? No way. You know what I'm saying? No way. Like, I'll buy Watch Dogs way before I buy that game. Yeah, I can't well, even comment on this part. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying, uh, I just don't see two, uh, you know, two sandbox games coming out at the same time. Well, personally, I think I've seen... Watch Dogs wants to be in the complete clear when they release the title. It's going to be the major one, and you know, there's nothing to be able to, to compete with it. And you know, what I'm saying, I'm just kind of, you know, just be obligated on it that they haven't gave us any news on it since three months ago, or even longer than that. It has been yeah. a while. I didn't even realize that until you said it, but yeah, it has been a long time. Yeah. The only thing I heard is that uh, Nintendo owners in Japan are jumping out of second-story windows because of the, the delay. <laughs> <laughs> I bet. It's not coming out. It's not delayed. Mark my words. That game will not come out on that system. Oh, man. That would suck. That would make Jeez. the Wii U. <laughs> Pee-poo. Uh, okay. <laughs> oh, no. I'm assuming that uh, for Watch Dogs, they're gonna they're reworking the whole thing, like the game, not from the from scratch, but they're gonna add features that they should have had from yeah. the start, and they realize that they didn't have it yeah. competing against another game, and uh, I think that's what they're gonna what do. Game? Like, I don't understand. <laughs> the game, uh, why, this, this game. I, I just don't get why it's basically a launch title and we haven't heard jack about it. Like, um, Infinite Second Son, we've heard everything about it since, you know, we knew it was going to be for the PlayStation 4. And we've seen one gameplay trailer and nothing after that. 
I know that they basically don't want to say they're having issues, but you know they could be like, oh, we're overlooking it, or they could give us an exact date of when they're going to give it to us, or around the time that they're going to give it to us. You know, they're not telling us anything about the game; they're just completely went in the dark with it. I yeah. don't think they're going to add more functionality to the game. Though. I don't think they're missing anything. I think they're adding functionality because, yeah. like, when they uh, announced the division. That game, people went crazy for oh, the yeah, things yeah, that yeah. they're using that game. Yeah. I have a feeling that they're going to try to use some of that same functionality into Watch Dogs, and that's what the rework and everything from the ground up. And not completely, but like pretty much they're, they're trying to add features that they didn't have. I don't think it's so much of them like n not having a complete game. I just think that they realize that in order to compete with some of the games that came out already, they're going to have to do something to the game. Now, they, had to, they couldn't have released at that time, that's all. Yeah. I'd and rather see them delay that for another two years and release something awesome. Awesome. Yeah. Thank yeah. You. yeah. I was going to say the same thing, Briar Rabbit. That's what I was actually waiting in line to say, but you got to the <laughs> line. Uh, if, if they're going to uh, delay this game, I don't mind it. There's plenty of games for us to play in the meantime. If they delay it for another year or two years, you know, time flies, guys, especially when you're playing PlayStation 4. Uh, I mean, having fun. I'm sorry. Uh, but um, if, they, if they release it... Two years from now, or a year and a half from now, I'm not really going to complain because ultimately it'd be a much better experience. And I mean, they're looking at games that have come out, and then they're looking at games that are com coming. They see a lot of this new tech and a lot of these new functionalities being used in these games, and they want to be able to compete with some of them. So I agree with you totally, not too nerdy. And you are absolutely too nerdy. But I love you. <laughs> yeah, I was thinking about dropping the not too part and just going with nerdy, but I'm like, nah. Nerdy <laughs> entertainment. <laughs> I can go a lot of different ways. <laughs> oh, man. I think it just got weird in here. Yeah, it definitely did. <laughs> We're from serious to weird really quick. Oh, man. So I had a question for everybody. It's a little less gaming related, but imagine if every, every job on the planet paid exactly the same amount, let's say $50,000 a year, mm. and it doesn't matter. Right? It doesn't matter if you're a race car driver or the president of the United States or a garbage man or a golf course owner. You got paid $50,000 a year. Hmm. Starting with COD made player, what job would you do and why? Oh, God. This is like... <laughs> Not to put you on the spot. <laughs> yeah, yeah, this is... Uh, why do I have to go first? Uh, uh, maybe the garbage man? Um, garbage man. Yeah. Why is that? Low stress? Yeah, you know, I uh, wouldn't want to be curious about people's things. Presidents are full of shit, and uh, <laughs> wouldn't want to have all that bullshit on my back. Um, golf course owner, golf is boring as fuck. So, <laughs> 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 uh, taking out garbage and picking up people's garbage doesn't seem too bad of a job if you actually think about it compared to all the other bullcrap. You you don't have to pick one of the examples I had. You could have any job. You could be uh, <laughs> oh, you could well, be a uh, really like garbage man. <laughs> oh. Slow clap. <laughs> hey, that's called a golf clap. And yeah, yeah, like I was golf. just on the stage. Oh, man. How about you, Connie? What would you go with? $50,000 a year, it could be any job on the planet. Wait, do we have to change that to euros? Or I, I don't know how to do the that. Exchange rate? Or quids? I think it's quid. It's quid. Quids, yeah, it's just like <laughs> Something easy. Like. I don't know. Come back to me. I'll think. All right. <laughs> Get punked. <laughs> what would you go with? I mean, I, I, oh, wait, well, yeah. Right. I would like to just do what I'm doing now. Just get paid to get fifty thousand dollars to play my PlayStation Four and upload videos. That's really Shit, why I think it that. That is a good answer. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck. I Shit, the man. Man over that. You think that we all would have gotten to that one pretty quickly, but. Uh... <laughs> How about you, 9 to 5 Gamer? What would you go with? I would be uh, like EMT or something to do with that because I feel no matter what you do, it's going to become work, whether it's yeah. gaming or not. And then I don't want to be like st stressed to game. Like I love gaming, but it's also a hobby at the same time. Yeah. If your hobby becomes your work, you're going to be burnt out on it. Oh, That's yeah. a good point. That's a real good point. If you It'll start mixing you. pleasure with business, eventually your pleasure becomes yeah. business. And oh, yeah. And I would be at EMT because people rock. That's why. <laughs> <laughs> How about you, Nazi Nerdy? 
Um, it's not really EMT, but I guess I am like saving uh, Nintendo. I would like to be CEO of Nintendo. <laughs> ah, <laughs> I like that answer. <laughs> like I, I'm up for a good challenge. You know, yeah. like I feel like that they need help. I want Nintendo to go back to where they were back in the day. Everyone pretty much started out with Nintendo. You know, when you're a kid or, or whatever, yeah. everyone knows Nintendo, and I feel like they should go back to the level that they were. So I mean, I would love to be CEO of, like Nintendo. To be honest with you, uh, I like that idea. Plus, they you, don't retire said, after years. You know, they could be there forever. That's a good point. <laughs> Those guys, they don't quit. <laughs> Beasley. Well, I've given this many, many seconds of thought, and uh, yeah, I think I, I, I think I'd, I think I'd be a housewife. Yeah. Like, uh, <laughs> no, 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 no. All joking aside, um, I'd do something crazy, like be a secret shopper or something. Just to get out and screw with people, you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> I, I work in a haunted house during the Halloween season. I, I don't know. I mean, a game tester. It's just so much shit. I mean, if you're all getting paid the same amount of money, it doesn't really matter anyway. Something I'd like to do. Uh, I'd probably go and I wouldn't deliver pizzas. I'd uh, I'd be a secret shopper just to scare people working. Yeah. Actually, yeah. I was a pizza delivery boy for a long time, and it was probably my favorite job of all time. Hmm. <laughs> did you get any? Did you get any of those uh, fabled naked door answers? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah, uh, my my old buddy back in Ohio, the, two of them actually, they they were pizza delivery boys years ago, and they told me about some of these fantastic stories of opening doors and getting more than a tip. It was great. <laughs> <laughs> Dear Penthouse, I never thought this would happen to me. <laughs> yeah. And it was extra beef. Uh, okay. Now we got to go back to Connie. Oh, God. Um, uh, I don't know. I mean, I'd like to be a tattoo artist someday, so just pick that's that. Cool. That'd be a good one. I'd pick that. I tattoo that. myself. Yeah, that's, a, that's pretty fun. Hmm. I mean, I got a full sleeve. Uh, some of it's my work. So, yeah. Uh, Damn, all these good ideas, and I pick a fucking garbage man. <laughs> <laughs> Shit. <laughs> God. Now, now, Briar Rabbit. That's why yeah. I get for being put on the spot. <laughs> Briar Rabbit. Briar Rabbit. Did, did, did you go, Briar Rabbit? No, uh, definitely a uh, female scuba instructor would have some <laughs> have some pull there. President of the United States, you know, that would be good. Uh, race car driver, that would be a lot of fun. I don't know if I'd really like putting my life on the line on a daily basis. But I think oh. ultimately, ultimately I really like doing the YouTube, and I think that if somebody were to pay me to do it, I could spend a lot more time and get a lot better at it. And I like the creative aspect of it. I know that... We get a lot of knocks for you know using gameplay, but there's quite a create a bit of creativity that goes into it, and I really enjoy that aspect of it. So oh, yeah. I'm, gonna, I'm gonna agree with Get Punked, I think. Now, oh, yeah, actually, I, I was at the honestly, of, uh, yeah, go ahead. I'd probably still do YouTube, but you just made me think of something. You said risking your life, maybe not. I would risk my life. I for fifty thousand dollars a year, I'd become the head of the KKK. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, but Whoa. <laughs> change the whole change the whole face of the organization. Whoa. Wait, here's a here's a better question though. Uh, who do you think has a chance to be more successful, you or me being CEO of Nintendo changing that company? Which one has a better chance? Be hands me. down. I think I got a better chance of being a garbage man than that. Can, can you guys hear it? I can't believe this son of a bitch got us selling these bean pies. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, man. I like that. That's good. I thought it was crazy, though. Like, uh, I went to the mall yesterday. Uh, here in Florida, we got this place called Wiregrass Mall. It's like, um, I think it's like three acres of land, and it's all an open mall. And I'm just sitting out there, and this guy walks up to me, and he's like, I know you. And I've never seen this guy before in my life. And he's like, I've seen you on YouTube before. He's like, you're pretty good for a beginner. And, uh... I started talking to him, and he told me uh, his name. I can't remember it for the de uh, death of me, but he used to be an MLG player for Halo back in the day. And uh, I just thought it was really cool that someone actually noticed me on the street, especially That's being cool. small, you know. And uh, he he had uh, experience in YouTube and stuff, and he just gave it all up. He said it was, like, uh, too much stress for him. No kids. Some, yep. some people aren't built for this, man. I mean, honestly. 
some people can't handle the stress. I mean, there's going to be stress anywhere you go, but it's compounded sometimes, and some people just rather go back to that Pleasantville life. I, I, I like, like to drown on This hobby, you know. this is like a really expensive hobby. I mean, it's something fun to do, um, and it is really expensive. Like I just said, I just spent about two grand in two days on trying to get new equipment and everything to make my quality better. Um... I literally stay up I and mean, I go in the mirror and I just try to practice my vocal so I'm not going um, um, um after every freaking word. And I'm just trying to practice my commentating, make content better, uh, give people what they want, try to make something interesting for them. And yeah, it, it's it turns into a job almost other than being a hobby if you're really dedicated to it, if you actually think about it. If it was just a hobby, I'd, I'd hop on here and just really not give a fuck and just record something, throw it on YouTube, not actually waste so much time and effort putting into it if it was just a regular hobby, you know, it's almost literally like a job, even though I'm not getting paid for it, I'm really not caring about the money, but, you know, all this effort that has to be put into it, it's damn near close to being a job. Hobbies yeah, are always just... like that, though, like, if you look at guys whose hobby is woodworking, they're always trying to improve yeah. at it, they're always trying to get, like, those intricate routers and the yeah. best table saw, and, you know, they, their whole garage is filled with this stuff, or the guys whose hobby is golf, you know, they're constantly buying, like, the newest golf clubs, and getting lessons, trying to get their handicap, handicap down to as low as they can. I feel bad for golfers. Huh? I don't even yeah. know how they can get into that. Yeah. <laughs> well, let, me, let me ask you a question, Cod. Are, like with with are you partnered with an affiliate right now, Cod Made? I would like to get partnered, but um, I don't want to get sucked into the YouTube trap. You know, I don't want to get... Sh partnered with somebody shitty, you know, that's going to use my content and, you know, if I'm supposed to get paid for something that they're making money off me for, I don't want to be ripped off. I'm not really interested in money, but I would like to be partnered. It'd probably help me out a little bit. I'd probably be able to interact with more people, uh, give me advice and stuff, but I don't know who to get partnered with. So uh, I've been looking at YT Gamers, and uh, they seem like an okay organization, but I don't know. I mean, if you guys any know anybody that would, you know, at least look at an application for me, I'd be really dire happy to know that. Well, you can join up with Briar Rabbit and myself. We're, we're with a pretty decent uh, partner as long as they recognize that you're partnered. Um, <laughs> but but one thing I want you to know, uh, Cotton Maiden, this is a universal truth, and this is for everybody. I'm sure most of you guys know this. You get out of life what you put into it. Um, yep. And that's across the board. I mean, anything starts off as a hobby, and if it becomes a job, you're going to get paid off like it's a job. Yeah. You know, uh, when I first made my first few videos, I just wanted to show my face and talk shit. Yeah, and, same here. <laughs> uh, ultimately, ultimately, I wanted to do better, and I wanted to create better content, and I wanted to be proud of my creations. And it becomes a job. I bought all this stuff, or my wife bought most of it, for uh, <laughs> for the the betterment of myself and my channel. And uh, the more you put in, the more you're gonna get out. It won't be immediate, but just know oh, it's coming. You know. Uh, yeah. Comedy player. Um, I actually have a. For this week, I did like another vlog, and um, it's actually gonna be put up like at nine o'clock or so. Yeah. Um, I actually talked about something that's related to this. Someone asked me like, why do I still make YouTube videos? Like, they might yeah. have said it as an insult. Like, it really doesn't matter because it's a good question, and like, I pretty yeah. much answer why I still make it. Oh, and yeah. like, it pretty much brings up all the questions. Like, you know, I'm probably not gonna be the biggest YouTuber. I'm not gonna do this. I'm not gonna do that. So why do I do it? And I, I answer that in the video. But like, pretty much like. I enjoy it, you know, that's the whole purpose of it, like, you, you have to enjoy it, you can't worry about little things like subscribers or money or anything like that, like, yeah. you know, like, it, it's not about that, it's about, if you enjoy it, then no matter if you do get big or you stay the same way you are, you're always going to enjoy doing it, and that you should appreciate, like, where, the way you started, like, right now, you just said you're getting better equipment, right, mm -hmm. so the videos you make now, you should look at those and like and like enjoy them because you know that when you get the better equipment, you just moved up a whole new level. And now you'll realize that your videos from where you started, you gradually see them get better. And you see years from now, if YouTube servers are still up, you actually get a chance to like go back and see like, oh man, I remember the way I felt about this subject or the way I talked and stuff like that. And you can actually see like a video documentary of yourself. I think that's what YouTube is really about. You know? For just that reason, I keep every video on a hard drive. I don't. I upload them to YouTube, but I don't delete them. I just put them on a uh, external hard drive, and when those hard drives fill up, I just throw them in the closet and grab another one because those things are so cheap at this point. Yeah. Uh, just because you know, if YouTube ever goes under or you know they stop 
you know, they put a time limit on how long videos are available for. I want to see that first video that I put up about Modern Warfare 3 and when I was using the mic that came with my laptop and I was going, uh, um, uh, the whole time. It's just, I don't know, it's just kind of cool to see. And it's this progression and it's been fun so far. Oh, yeah. That's what I love about YouTube. I mean, I can express myself the way I want to be. Um, never really fit in anything. I used to play sports a little bit because I was forced to. I was always a gamer guy. Always loved it. You know, like I ran into Bright Rabbit and uh, Beastly Gamer, seeing what they were doing, seeing Beastly Gamer on uh, Twitch off the PlayStation Live, and I was just like, damn, this is cool. You know, I only had like two or three videos up at the time when I asked Beastly if he could check me out. He's like, sure. You know, him and his wife both. Uh, you know, gave me a little bit of support, and I was like, heck yeah, you know, I got three subscribers right now, I'm feeling good, and I was just like, I'm going to keep making more videos, and, like, I don't care about subscribers, but yeah, me having 32 subscribers right now, that means that's actually 32 people that care that I'm doing something, and they like what I'm doing, or, you know, just gave me a second out of their time just to click that button, that's, that's the biggest thing to me, you know, not yeah. big, but 32 people, that's still a lot. The, the best advice I could give is to, like, Appreciate the subscribers you do have, and mm -hmm. not worry about the subscribers you don't have. Yeah, you know, like that's like what it comes down to. Like, if you have subscribers, you know, interact with them, enjoy them, because like this is look at the, what we're doing now. You know, like that's why I couldn't wait to get back here. Like last week, I couldn't make it a show, but like this week, I was so excited. You know, I was looking forward to Sunday night on this show because you get a chance to you know talk to people. You know, and hear their opinions because not everyone has the same opinion as you. And for everyone to see a video of like everyone sharing different opinions or maybe the same opinion, it's really fun. I mean, we have someone from the UK over here, and she like seems like an awesome gamer. Plus, funny as hell so far. So I'm definitely gonna go check out her videos. But like, that's the thing. Like, that's what it's all about: the YouTube community. And within that community, we're we're the gamer community. Yep. You know, and I think that's what separates us from other people that don't get ex a chance to experience this, you know. We're like our own little family. And yeah. I got yeah. a piece of gamer's word right there. I, I took your little family thing, shed a, shed a tear on that one right there. <laughs> <I just laughs> that shit, was an I awesome video, too. Beastly. Oh, oh, yeah, lot, like uh, when Beastly Gamer invited me to do this, like I thought it was an amazing thing. You know, I was bragging to my wife. I was like, oh, yeah, you know, I'm actually getting interaction with people. You know, I'm not just being the guy behind the camera. I'm actually, people want to communicate with me face-to-face, -face, even if it's over a camera. You know, it's just an awesome experience that I never expected I would get. I wanted to start a YouTube channel years ago. I just never had the balls to do it, you know. And well, I you probably how... had the balls, but you probably didn't have too much. <laughs> yeah, and uh, I seen Beastly, and he seemed like such a nice guy. Because I know there's a lot of people on YouTube that are just complete douchebags, and they actually are in it for the money. <laughs> and you know, Beastly and Briar, I know they're not for that. They're just two guys that love doing what they do, helping people out. Uh, informing the game community, and it just really inspired me. And just to be here every Sunday is just like a really big achievement for me that I could never imagine having before. Wait, imagine so you... if like, what what have you got an achievement on your screen right now, like PlayStation? Yeah. The Beastly Thoughts. You see that trophy right there? You see that platinum trophy? <laughs> Wait, so you mean you guys aren't in it for like that free slice of pizza every month? <laughs> Oh, no. uh, I don't know. You guys aren't getting the free pizza? <laughs> what? <laughs> Whoa, where's that pizza? What the hell? I didn't get one yet. Yeah. Pizza, baby. <laughs> <laughs> I like all the free computer parts they keep sending me. <laughs> now, um, not too nerdy. I, I, I haven't seen uh, your subscriber count. Well, I, I watched your videos, but I didn't look at your subs, so I don't know exactly where you're sitting at. But I know that uh, pretty much everybody here has just made... Uh, a huge gain or at least a nice accomplishment. So I want to go across the board uh, and, and let everybody know. Get Punk, congratulations uh, on hitting that 800 subscribers. Connie, you just hit 400. Congratulations. Yay, thank you. I made it happen like right when I subscribed too. And uh, <laughs> God, you just. It was actually him. He was number 400. <laughs> he wins. <laughs> I try to. Make, you know, I want to make a difference, you know. And uh, Briar, Briar, you're over the 3,000 marks. So I should have said this to you a couple uh, a couple weeks ago. And I just hit 200. I'm at 210. And uh, it, taking it a day at a time. And of course, we all really appreciate everybody who comes and watches us bullshit and share our thoughts with you. It means a lot. And uh, I wanted to congratulate all you guys on the hard work you're putting into this because I know it's. I know it's not easy. Doing this kind of work and living a regular life, I got four kids. They're all sick, so like Briar Rabbit, I feel pretty good about myself. I'm not sick this week. Yeah. Uh, and, and so, um, 
it, it's just you know sometimes it can be tiring. It can be a, you know it can be a trial. But uh, congratulations to all you guys for the hard work you're putting in, and uh, I can't wait to see what happens a year from now. Oh yeah. <laughs> We should have like a big anniversary party. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm gonna have two stripper poles behind me. Oh shit! Right. Speaking of birthdays, <laughs> it's your birthday. Oh, it's yeah, your birthday. Bird Rabbit. <laughs> I probably won't see you, Brian Rabbit. So happy early birthday! Hey, thank you, Brett. Your birthday's coming right up too, right? You said ten days. March twelfth, nineteen ninety ninety-five. Damn. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding, guys. Yeah. 1980, man. You said 18 what? 1886. <laughs> yep, I'll be 34 in a couple of days, and I don't feel a day over 33. <laughs> so we I actually thought, anything else we want to talk about today? I actually thought Connie was like... 15 when I first saw your video, Connie. I asked Kate, my wife, I said, this kid, how old do you think she is? She said, 17, maybe. Then I found out you were 38. I couldn't believe it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. You believe I'm just how many times <laughs> Yeah, people can't I'm believe I'm, I'm 28. Everyone thinks I'm like younger than that, but I'm actually 28. So. People can't believe I'm 10, but, you know. <laughs> it's, that, it's that Darth Vader voice, you know? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I am your father. I just turned 11. <laughs> Got my first hair. Oh, look, guys. <laughs> <laughs> but, but it's on your head. Um, I, I want to say thanks to everybody for coming. Hopefully, I can get all you guys back here next week. And if you can't, just whenever you can make it, I really appreciate everybody. All, every person who was on here today, and even the ones who couldn't make it. You guys are part of my family, and I will continue to represent for the Beastly family. All you guys are featured on my page, so if anybody wants to uh, to subscribe to anyone on the show, go to the Beastly Gamer channel, and they'll be featured right on the right side of my page. And uh, they're also in the description of every single video that I do. So if you guys want to click on them and find out you know, about these guys' channel, please do that. I don't have anything else, guys. But, again, thank you all for joining us today, and I hope to see you all next week, if you What's can make that? it. Why don't we let everybody kind of wrap it up and uh, tell, them what, tell everybody what's going to be on their channels next week. Sure. Uh, not too nerdy. What, what can we look forward to next week from right. you? Now, next week I'm going to show uh, a quick tip about, like, Sony Vegas. I'll, that'll be the first thing, Sony Vegas 12. I'll show you exactly what to do, certain things that maybe you might not know how to do. And uh, yeah. this, the same thing, uh, Warframe Wednesdays. I also do uh, Don't Start Saturdays. But there's also a video that should be done next week. It's a parody video that sort of pokes fun of, like, the console wars. So it's not just this generation. We're going to go back in history and see how they evolved from the beginning <laughs> till now. Nice. That's something I forgot to talk about tonight. Is Did you guys hear Seth Rogen is going to be uh, yep. getting together a Genesis versus SNES yep. like, console war? That's mm -hmm. why I'm making a video to, to sort of mm -hmm. say that movie's coming out, so it got me thinking, has this really been, like, something that's been going on for years, and I show, like, how it evolved through time? Yeah, apparently Blast that console war was brutal. Yeah. <laughs> Blast processing, baby. <laughs> Wait. Blast processing. Uh, Sega does what Nintendo don't. Wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> how about you get Pug99? What can we look forward to from you this uh, week? A lot of live streaming. That's what I'm, I've been into, nice. and uh, there's some uh, commentaries. That's pretty much all I'm be done. All right. All right. Any new uh, montages? That's what I'm always looking forward to. Wouldn't yeah, I? I'm trying to hit some clips uh, to get yeah. them all edited. Yeah. All right. Connie, how about you? What do you? What can we look forward to next um, week from you? I can't promise anything depending on whether I get my PC or not, but I was going to do um, Broken Age Let's Play when I get my PC, and I was also going to try and do an emulator. I was actually trying to do Shenmue on my laptop. Oh, really? I'll see how that goes. I can't promise anything, but just watch out for stuff. All right. Mm -hmm. Cod watch, your, watch your other stuff, too, man. She's got a real funny channel. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I like the uh, Girl Gamer Problems video. I thought that, that was That really was good. so funny, yeah. man. Thanks, guys. Cod made player, what can we look forward to from you this week? Um, this Wednesday coming up, me and my clan, we're finally in the Platinum Division for Clan Wars, so we're going to be doing that. What's the name uh, of your clan? Uh, one Punch Knockout. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thank you. And then um, 
Resogun Fridays, and then uh, once I get my equipment, I think either Monday or Tuesday, I'll be doing uh, you know a new setup video because the last one it was really shitty quality and didn't have a good camera. That's why I'm getting all this stuff, and then uh, you know do a complete new setup up uh, my setup update, and um, I'm a COD made player, so plenty of COD videos. Nice. <laughs> I love seeing people's setup videos. I don't know, there's something really nerdy about it. But I love I watching like it. Too. Hey, I have subscribed to channels just based on their their setup video. <laughs> <laughs> now, have you guys ever heard of Barnacle's Nerdgasm? Yes, yes sir. That, that guy's got setup. like three 32-inch monitors <laughs> lined up. Yeah, it's he's got two uh, two 3D printers. I mean, it's I like that channel. <laughs> <laughs> Beastly, what do you got coming up this week? I'm going to be finishing out last this week. I'm, I'm going to be getting into onslaught Call of Duty this week. Mm. I haven't got it. I haven't got it yet. I didn't, I didn't even get the, uh, the the whole entire package, fifty dollar package, when I got it. But I'll be playing that this week. I've really been enjoying a lot of Call of Duty this week. Now, now that my TV is actually working, getting yeah. back into the groove of things. That helps. That really does help. And uh, I'll probably be playing a little bit more of uh, my DLC Left Behind because I loved it so much. Yeah, I played through it multiple times. I've I played through it twice. Um, I did one live and I did one with my brother who came over last night. Like I said, it's only two hours long, but there's some really deep insight to Ellie as a character that you would have no idea about playing the original game. No spoilers, of course. Yeah. But if you if you want to know more about Ellie, this is something for you to definitely pick up. So for the guys who haven't tried it, please do. If not, watch the Let's Play on my channel. Or my it on Connie's. The full game. Um, <laughs> It got. I thought the combat got cooler once you got to the harder difficulties and you lost the ability to see people through walls yeah. and all that stuff. Is that? Have you tried the harder difficulties on the DLC? Is there multiple difficulties on the DLC? There is multiple difficulties, but I just went normal. But mm -hmm. I, I gotta say, I actually like the combat more in the DLC than I did in the original game. There's a new dynamic, mm -hmm. and I think that it should have been implemented. It would have made things a little, I guess, easier. Uh, in the original game, especially dealing with the infected. Uh, but, yeah, I really enjoyed it. I think it's great, and uh, I think everybody should play it or watch the uh, Let's Plays on my channel or Connie Kuroi's channel. <laughs> That's right. Absolutely. All right, I'll be doing. Uh, I'll be continuing the Thief Let's Play. I got a couple of videos coming up with uh, Janice. We got a rom-com coming and a... Uh, favorite. <laughs> Thanks. Rom-com um, is the shit, yeah. Uh, and uh, we've got some Call of Duty. I've been playing with the Onslaught DLC with the Xbox One. I'll probably make a couple videos about that uh, now that it's available for the PlayStation 4. I actually have a couple of hardware re reviews planned. Uh, I'll give you the details on that when I actually release the videos, but that'll be fun too. Other than that, uh, I'm all out of ideas. <laughs> <laughs> so should we wrap this one up? They'll come to you. Yeah, guys. <laughs> All yeah. right, guys. Have a great night. I'm going to stop the broadcast. Stay on for a minute, okay? All right.